For the very first time in six months, Elizabeth Hughes' Whining About Movies returns for New Year's Eve 2021, and Gilbert might make an appearance. Well, greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your Master of Fun and Wonder, your Viceroy of Verisimilitude, and call me whatever name you want, but you didn't come here to see me. I am, by the way, Robert Meyer Burnett. You came to see the lovely lady you've missed for six months. She's been missing from YouTube, but tonight, ladies and gentlemen, she's back. Please welcome the star of the show. Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell, the ace. She'll tell you what that is. Please welcome her back to, oh my God, to YouTube. Hello, everybody. I and am Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell, the ace, the arbiter of cinematic excellence, and the enchantress of entertainment. Well, Elizabeth, what's it like to be back on YouTube? We're not actually in the same room. Oh, no, I just not. popped a bottle. It is New Year's Eve. Why don't you tell the folks at home what you've been doing? I have been in school this whole time. Um, I am starting my final term in uh, two weeks, and I will be graduating in April. Now, a little bird told me you are actually going to be employed by your school. They think so highly of you. Yes, I am <laughs> going to be teaching... Um, the live drawing workshops. Oh, and does that mean so you with, get to see naked dudes with big... It does indeed. So you get to see Peen. I get to see Peen live. You finally get to see live Peen. <laughs> we talked about Peen on the show a lot, and you get to now see live Peen. Yeah, live Peen. A lot more, yep. a lot bigger Peen than me. Should I feel well, uh, I insecure? Know. Should I be insecure? No. <laughs> Are you sure? I don't know. No, because I, I... Yeah, no. Okay. By the way, our lady Lynn Hobday, our favorite British expat in Japan, who, by the way, can see Yamato 2205. I couldn't. I couldn't see it. It's not out in America. She can see it. She says... Has she seen it, though? I don't know if she sees tw she's seen 22, uh, Space Battleship Yamato 2205. I don't know. <laughs> I know I haven't. Um, I do know I am getting the Hachette... Uh, part works of the Andromeda that's four feet long because I have my Japanese buyer who's buying them for me. But uh, she can see it's two different movies, two parts. She can see it. I can't. Lynn says Happy New Year. Uh, we're already well into it over here in Japan, hoping you both have a happy and healthy 2022. Well, thank you. Happy New Year. Well, Lynn, how you doing? You know, on that note, uh, we both have champagne. Um, oh, yeah. What is this? What is this? Nicholas what? Mine isn't open yet. Well, you got to open it. I mean, I got to wait for you to open it. I mean, we're supposed to be a... This is a party party household, right? Uh, hmm. How do I open this? Come on, man. Come on, really? You You're French. should have opened this for me. I should have opened it for you. Like, <laughs> come on now, take the lid. Yeah, take the, there you go. Now pull it down, pull the thing down. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I mean, come on now. I, I mean, I'm, you know. Uh, so I can't even. For, for everyone, as you know, Whining About Movies is the show where Elizabeth and I, as a couple, talk about movies and things that we have liked this year. So I figured what we would do tonight is because uh, we haven't been on a long time. People keep asking to see the lovely Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell. And we're going to talk about what we've watched, celebrate the new year. It's going to happen in 20 or 19 minutes. And uh, we're going to get our crunk right. on. Apparently, I mean, I don't know. We I mean, each I, have our own bottle of champagne. Yeah, I, I got us each because she's inside and I'm in the Rob Observatory. Which Wait, I don't is want to get it on my iPad. weird. Yeah, you know, just just be careful. And I did get us these fine bottles of shit. By the way, 
There were very few bottles of champagne in the grocery store. Very few left. I found these. It was kind of sad, really. Um, you know, you're not helping. We're trying to keep the party going. Just a little sedate. Oh, wow. Ooh, you see that? Yeah. Look at that. Zoo, 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 zoo. Look at that. Oh, I know. That's very phallic of you. Hmm. You're going to see live peen. And I'm, yeah, live peen in, in a drawing study class. Yep, live peen. Live peen. Well, uh, Insomatic says, Happy New Year. I'm so drunk, my family hates me. But I troll them. <laughs> Insomatic 101, God bless you. God bless you. Anyone who trolls their own family, well, you're wow. aces in my book. So, congrats. Um, but is your family drunk? That's the question. The question, I, I don't know. Is the family drunk? Who? Maybe that's the problem. Could that be the, the problem? Because the family isn't drunk, so he's annoying because he is drunk. Well, he's he's not drunk enough that he can't type and uh, in the uh, live chat of a New Year's Eve festivities. We got Dirty Soul Monkey here. Dirty Soul Monkey says, I sense Ooh. a cork taking an eye out. Ha, ha, ha. Jason Webster says, Happy New Year to everyone in the chat. I hope all of everyone's hopes and dreams for 2022 come true. Elizabeth, do you have hopes and dreams for 2022? I do. Should we I drink do. a toast? Well, it's not midnight yet. Well, that's, can we, we, a, we can still drink a toast. Is it now, bad I think, luck to already drink? Fuck or no. What? No. What the hell? What, look, what, this is show is called whining about movies. When do we not drink on this show? I I would like to raise our glasses to all the imagination what? connoisseurs out there. All of you. All of you faithful viewers. Everyone who's members of the Burnett Work. People who just what? tune into the Burnett Work. All shapes, sizes, colors, creeds, however you identify across these, the 28 known galaxies, I salute the greatest audience on YouTube, which is the audience of the Burnett Work, you imagination connoisseurs, you members of this, the Post Geek Singularity. I raise my glass in hopes, and Elizabeth, so do you. Yes. Do you have anything to add to that? Happy New Year. I hope it's a great one. I hope it's a great one. To all of you, thank you for your ongoing support in all of the ways that you do. And we do have the best community on YouTube. So here, here, chin, chin, kampai, uh, uh, nasro, nasro, nasrave, nasrovia, <laughs> lachayim, uh, uh, sloncha, uh, whatever. Chin, chin. Ooh, that is some fine ass. That's pretty good. You like it? Yeah. Cause we, yeah, know, that's, we, that's really nice. It's nice, huh? Yeah, I think it's pretty yeah. nice. Uh, Rogue Thinker says to the PGS, hail, shalom, and chin chin. In somatic says, hell yeah. Nice. Um, uh, <clears throat> Turk187 says, don't look up, laugh out loud. Aaron Johnson says, hello. Hmm. So, Elizabeth, there was a lot yep. of great entertainment this year. You streamed a lot of shows, we saw some movies. What were some of the highlights of things that you watched this year? Uh, I watch a lot of shows. You watch a lot of movies and I watch a lot of shows. And sometimes we watch shows together. Yes. But a lot of times we don't. It's um, true. Insomatic, by the way, 101 says cheers. So cheers. that's true. It's true. And you, you watch because I, I stream a lot. You know, I'm out here streaming. So you watch shows when you're not at school and... Uh, all that. Yeah. Dieter, Dieter Bastion's in the house, yo. Deets. Deets is in the house. Uh, we got to bring Deets on. What do you think? We do. We, we got to bring Deets. Deets. On. I'm going to send Deets a link. Uh, Deets has never streamed with you, has he? Oh, wait. He did no. once. Didn't he? No, because we were supposed to watch the movie he sent us. Uh, uh, bing, bang, bang boom. boom. Bang, boom, boom. Ba, bob. Sis, boom, ba. Yeah. And we never watched it. We were going to stream and talk bad about people. it, but we never did. Wow. Yeah, we are. We're going to bring <clears throat> we're going to bring people on this New Year's shindig. I'm going to send out a link to Deets. Here, Tom Jr. Jackson will my, come on, you know. I was looking at my list of things that I've watched. Okay, hang on. Let me uh let me uh I'm I'm going to throw out a link to Deets. I'm going to bring Deets on if he wants to come on. Hey Deets. Uh Hang on the heck it's not uh his name is not popping up what the hell's going on here 
Uh, I'm gonna throw out a link. I mean, Deets doesn't have to come on. Deets, no, no pressure. If you don't come on, you're you suck. But hey, no pressure. Uh, <laughs> Maybe he's hung over, Rob. It's Deets is not. He doesn't gone, drink. Big. He's like such a goody two shoes. He doesn't drink. Yeah, I don't he think doesn't so. drink beer. I know he's a German that doesn't drink beer. It's terrible. Doesn't beer run in their blood? Like they just like. <laughs> I don't. He'll have to tell you. I mean, I don't know if he have wants beer for blood. If he wants to come on, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what they do in Saarbrücken, Deutschland. Dietz is going to tell us. Something tells me he's not uh, drunk, but we'll see. Hey, Dietz, you got the, uh, you got the, uh, you got it, and we'll bring people on all night long. We're, we're just, uh, oh, not all night. See how far you can go. We'll see if Dietz comes. <laughs> so you have watched a lot of shows. What are some of the yeah. things that stuck in your in your mind this year? Okay, so let's start from the bottom. And go By the way, Tom Jr. Backwards. Jackson says, <clears throat> Happy New Year, Rob and Elizabeth. Good to see you back, Elizabeth, and congrats. Rob, thanks for the past year of great friendship. Well, Tom Jr. Jackson, I want to thank you because you coined the phrase, we're all goof, goof people. people. Are you a goof person, Elizabeth? Are you goof? I definitely am a goof person. I think so, Just too. ask my kids. <laughs> well, yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, so what have you watched? That you, What are the things like... I, I Let me start. Let me say that you and I both watched Mayor of Easttown together. Yeah, I was going to say su- Succession, because that's what we most recently watched together. Right. But, yeah. Wasn't um, Mayor of Easttown great? It was. It so was good, really right? Good, really well acted. And it was interesting because I lived in that area for a very long time. And it was interesting to hear the name of the towns and see um, that area again. And, and Kate Winslet was absolutely amazing. Yeah, she really was. I mean, she crushed it. Crushed. Yeah. I don't see Deets uh, jumping on. Look Love who's here. Do you know who's here? Do you know who, us, who just sent us a super chat? Our oh. old friend, Timula the Spider Monkey. Oh. Haven't seen Hello. Tim in a while. Tim says, uh, <laughs> just a quick New Year's message and some quatloos to show some love. I haven't had a lot of time to be here recently, but you're all in my heart. Post Geek Singularity. Aww. Well, Timula the Spider Monkey is one of our longtime imagination connoisseurs. It's great to have you back, Timula. I hope uh, everything is good. Rm is here, sends in a super chat and says, Hi, Liz and Rob. Hello. Happy New Year to you both and to the PGS. We'll probably bring on Rm a little later, too. I mean, you haven't streamed with any of these people. Uh, I haven't been on in a long time. Right, but you haven't streamed with them. Not because I... Yeah, I mean, well, you started these shows after whining kind of wound down well, it's never wound down so <laughs> whining has never okay. wound down it's been never this is the 130th episode of whining about movies even though the opening yeah. i i forgot to change the opening number to 130 from 129 <laughs> hey what do you want from me it's new year's eve what can i do what it, w- can i mean I what's new like that's always been oh wait great thanks thanks for that you're welcome make me look bad um, can I say? um okay so what else have we watched well uh ragnarok star sends in a tip and says happy new year guys i tried to squeeze in one more movie before the new year coppola's the outsiders the complete novel in 4k i had 10 minutes left before hbo hbo max took it off i buy the 4k disc but it is not it does not come with a blu-ray and it's 28 dollars let me tell you something, Ragnarok Star. Speaking of that, since you're talking about that, since you're talking about the outsiders and what it, I just want to show you, um, b- believe it or not. <gasps> oh, of course, this it's is right the, there on your desk. This is I know, right? People just talk about things and I produce them. This is the Studio Canal. I've shown this on uh, Let's Get Physical Media. This is a box set with much swag in it. Uh, it's a great disc. It does come with a Blu-ray. Uh, it's very cool. Just thought I would, uh, you know, don't mean to be a dick. But, yeah, I have it. Just saying. You know. I didn't know that they would take it off. That sucks that they took it off of uh, HBO Max. 
But you're going to stay gold, Ragnarok star. Stay gold. Uh, you're a pony boy. Uh, the Richard sends in a super chat and says, Happy New Year and holiday blessings. The best is yet to come. So happy to have Elizabeth's back in action. Thanks, Richard. Happy New Year, uh, Richard. The Richard has a lot of cool stuff percolating. He's, seen, he's shown me glimpses of it. He's got people working awesome. day and night for him. He's going to do some incredible show. Um, Looking forward to it. It's going to be good. So, Mayor of Easttown, you loved it? Yeah, it was It was good. What did you think of it? I loved it. I thought, I mean, I thought that Kate Winslet gave a fearless performance. I love the storyline. I thought it was really, really good. Um, they'll probably end up doing a season two, but they don't need to. I mean. Oh, really? There's going to be a season two? Probably. I think there is. But, I mean, they don't, it was, it was a great, it was a great story. I loved it. I thought it was really, really good. Mm-hmm. By the way, Dietz, come on, Dietz, where are you at, buddy? He's probably taking a shower. He probably is hungover. Maybe is he, he in did. the uh, chat? Uh, wait, I I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Sorry, Rob, he has no time. He has to jump off. No time this morning. He's a chicken. He's probably hammered. <laughs> well, that's all right. I'm gonna send. Uh, I'll send. Uh, if Dietz isn't coming on, Dietz, like, look at that. What a disappointment. He's just scared of you. He's scared of... Uh... No, we're buds. Uh, I gave are him you? the name Deets. Yeah. Well, okay. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I mean... Um, okay, well. If uh, he doesn't want to come on. Um... Mm-hmm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Hang on. Who, who, who can I bring on here? I don't even know. Who would you like to see? Uh, so talk, come on, uh, get, come on this is, <clears throat> t- give me a little bit, give me some spice, babe. What'd you think about, uh, the well, entertainment of 2021? What, what have you seen that you liked? Okay. I've seen a lot of things. Uh, succession is what we recently watched. Um, very interesting show uh i have to yep. say the first season i would sleep on and off because we watch it late and it didn't matter because several episodes later i'd wake up and uh it was fine i didn't really miss anything so uh that's good <laughs> okay um, but you know you can miss a few episodes and still um know what's happening well, it's true, but but I think as you get into it, I mean, the first season I thought was great, but again, a little slow to start because you don't know, yeah. uh, you don't know what's going on. But uh, yeah, basically, I slept through most of the first season. <laughs> well, that's not good. No, it's fine. It's fine because then I could get into the second season and the third season, so it all worked out well. And if I didn't understand something, I would just ask you. It's okay. true, you know, and I I would try and explain it the best I possibly could. So, uh, but it's great, and you haven't seen the last three episodes of uh, Succession. Well, no, I fell asleep, but see the those I need to watch. So yeah, yeah, you went ahead and watched them, and I slept. Yeah, the so last three I episodes are epic. To, epic. I have to finish that up. They're epic. So uh, yeah, well, uh, we'll see. By the way. Uh, I did uh, send the link on Facebook. I'm having a, an issue with my, with my, uh, whatchamacallit, what do I want to call it? Oh, I'm having an issue with my Gmail. I don't know why. So you like, you like Succession. You like Mayor of Easttown. Now yeah. tell me about the French show about the talent agency. Oh, yes. 10%. Uh, French show, it's about a, yeah, talent, talent agency. It's um, their agents for these French actors. Um, and it's really super interesting. It's very French, which I love. Um, and there's how many seasons? Two, three. I don't know. I think, I think there's three seasons and they're, they are now making a fourth season. They are making definitely worth watching. If you like Frenchiness, it's very, (laughs) it's worth watching. If you like Frenchiness, yeah, you know what I mean. Right? I, I need to know what you mean. Uh, 
Uh, I don't like know Fran- what Frenchiness means. The way French people are, they're very uh, direct and they're very, uh, they don't beat around the bush. They'll tell you exactly what they think. Um, uh, and if you and, like that, then uh, do you, you like Frenchy? Are you Frenchiness? Do you um, think I'm Frenchy? Do I tell you what I think? But you're pretty Frenchy. Like, I don't, you're very Frenchy. Um, <laughs> Now, so you, you've streamed with people before, but you know who you haven't streamed with? You haven't no. streamed with... You've never streamed with her. Would you like to? I would love to. Look who it is. It's... is live in the chat. How you doing? Hello. It's already New Year for you. It is. Happy New Year, Elizabeth and Robert. You both look Happy great. Happy New Year. It's- so nice to be on with both of you. This is so special. Thank you for bringing me on. Did you have a, totally. a good New Year's Eve? Did you go someplace? Did you party with your mom? Did you party with other people? What did you do? Did you watch the Apple Drop? Did they I watched this year? I did. I watched it on television. Um, you know, my mother, she's not supposed to drink, but I let her have a sip of alcohol and, you know, I drank something. So that's no. about it. There was, I didn't do, I didn't go anywhere or do anything special because it just is, it's not one of those years, but I'm, I'm glad to be alive and I, I feel good and I hope you guys feel good too. I feel good. I, you know, we're still alive. It's all good. <laughs> I'm going to, What? Do, I, I mean, th- hang on, I'm moving, I'm moving your picture over. Yes. So uh, there you go. Uh, so we can see the whining <laughs> about movies. So uh, this is, this is thrilling. I've been streaming with uh, now for a while. We've never streamed. The three of us have never streamed together. Um, uh, let me ask you, what have you seen this year besides Tango Shalom that you loved? Um, well, I agree with Elizabeth on uh, Mayor of East, East, uh, would, that was such a great show. Um, mm-hmm. It was so good. Uh, and I haven't really seen Kate Winslet do a lot of shows like that. No, um, I mean, she's yes. usually, I mean, she was fearless in that I think show. it's the first show I've seen her in, right? I've only seen her in movies, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And um, I have to say that I, I uh, loved, um, my favorite film of the year was, is Titan because it was so different and uh, unique and, you know, it, it definitely was not, it's not a family friendly film, but it's, it's exploratory. And I thought that the message that it had in it was that, um, you know, even with this young lady's mistakes and whatever she's doing with her life, there was hope for her at the end um, in the film. And I love that message that despite whatever mistakes you've made, um, you know, you can still have hope. You can redeem yourself. And I thought that was a beautiful message for that film. No, hmm, I haven't seen it. That one of, one of the movies, uh, yeah, we, well, I, I'm waiting to get it to show it to you. One of the movies that you saw that I own uh, is New Order. And yes. I have yet to watch it with Elizabeth. I mean, this is one of the movies, even though I don't know why I own it and I haven't watched it, but um, it's rough. And uh, to me, uh, from what I understand, it's one of the great movies of the year. Um, what did you, oh, you know what? It is midnight. It is now. We forgot to count down. Cheers. Happy New Year. Happy Happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year. The Pacific, the Pacific time zone. We are now officially in 2022. Year three of the pandemic. Cheers to that. (laughs) Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year. (laughs) Uh, S. Bean, by the way. SBM says the super chat and says, Great to have an episode of Eliza Views to end 2021. Mm-hmm. And begin it at the same time. And begin 2022. There you go. 200 Watch Studio says, Happy New Year, guys. Wait a minute. What guys? I'm streaming with some lovely ladies. What's up? <laughs> Hi, I understand Watson. what you're saying. Um, Hi, but so, so tell me about uh, New Order. Um, well, I really wish you and Elizabeth had seen it already, but, um, and I do want to get Elizabeth's opinion about it because. This is the film I feel like that defined and predicted so many things that happened over the past two years. Like, mm-hmm. for example, in this film, there are scenes where there's writing that goes on. And um, I should say felt- rioting, not writing. Like, it's yeah, I'm not sorry. like Pablo. I'm it's not like, slurred. you know, life <laughs> in the time of cholera. Sure. Like, it's not yeah. like that's rioting. <laughs> Yes, there is rioting that occurs in the film, but there's also some parts of the film where they talk about how, um, 
you know, this particular uh, upper class family and a, and a bunch of upper class families, there's still this resentment from, you know, this other class that works for them. And when the film starts off initially, things seem okay, but it's actually like at a smoldering point, kind of like ha what's happened over the past few years, how people are just upset about stuff. Mm. And, you know, and it, the similarities between it really shocked me. But another thing that I thought was very interesting is that when they, you know, the film literally is a new order because there's this establishment that takes place that it's not easily definable. And I think that that's the beauty of the film is that it's so unexpected. I don't even know what they did exactly. I'm not even quite sure what the regime is. And I really like that, that I had to kind of try and figure out what was going on. And um, it is brutal. It's a brutal film. But I think that it it certainly maybe picked up on tensions that were underlying in uh, society and that maybe have come to a head in, you know, in our country, the United States, let's say, or even around the world with the riots that have gone on. And it was very insightful and I think very informative. Mm. Now, Elizabeth, one of the things that you watched that I sort of got an engrossed in is Money Heist. And people have been talking to me about Money Heist and you you were binging Money Heist like a fiend. Um, yeah, because for for many, many months now, my mom has been telling me to watch it. She watched it dubbed in French, and she actually at the beginning thought it was a French show because her sisters in France were like, "You have to watch this show." So she thought it was French, and she it's was Spanish like, you have to from watch Spain." This. Yeah, it's yes, but she didn't realize that at first because she because the dubbing was so well done in French. <clears throat> I even watched it a little bit in French, and I was like, "Yeah, you can't even barely tell that it's dubbed, like because Spanish and French are so closely related that." You know, even even the way that the sentences are structured is pretty much the same. So uh, the mouth movements look like French. So she really thought it was in French. And she kept telling me, you got to watch this show. you got to watch this show. And she kept telling me the name, which is La Casa de Papel. And I was like, I, I don't know. I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch something dubbed in French that's not even a French show and so I kept avoiding it because I don't know. <laughs> finally, I was like, okay, I don't know what to watch. I'm going to finally watch this show. And then I, I was searching for it and realized it's titled Money Heist here. Um, and so I started watching it and I was tired. So I didn't want to watch. I didn't want to read. So I watched it dubbed in English. I know you hate that, Rob. And you would walk in and you'd be like, I can't believe you're watching this in English. <laughs> But you know what? I did. Okay? Uh, the the dubbing, to be fair, to. the dubbing's pretty good. I just, I can and, tell. And I tried it. I to tried me, it's it like fingers on a chalkboard when I when I listen to dubbing, <laughs> especially modern dubbing, because it, it's just, I can't I can't hang with it. Yeah, but um, it's okay it wasn't bad. dubbed in English. But I have to say, the dubbing in French is really good. Uh, mm. The English dubbing is okay. I mean, you, it's, you know, it's okay. Yeah. Um, and then I also uh, watched a little bit in in Spanish with the subtitles, so it was interesting to <laughs> to compare the three. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, I haven't finished it. I'm the kind of person that in the third season I kind of get tired of stuff. Um, it's kind of like the same story over and over again. So I'm still in season three. I think there's four now. Um, I think there's five I'm, actually. Is, is there five? Yeah, I think there's a right, fifth five. season that just dropped. Um, but I will watch the rest of it just because my mom loves it so much. Well, now I want to ask the two of you. I think the big television sensation of the year is Squid Game. You know, and I've been doing a review of it. Obviously, Elizabeth, you and I watched Squid Game. Uh, yeah. Fascinated by it. And it, it, it was a the way that Spider-Man has swept the world. Uh, Squid Game has swept the world. I'd ask you, mm, you've watched it. Of course, right? Have you watched you watched Squid Game? Yes, I have. Now, in a way, I mean, New Order. Even though I haven't seen it, I do know that it's a critique of our modern society, and it deals with class, <clears throat> uh, income inequality, income disparity. There's a lot of of social factors that are that come into play in New Order, as with Squid Game. 
uh, what did you think of Squid Game? And um, was it was it did it live up to the hype? I think it it lived up to the hype. And something that um, I kind of found out not from watching it, but from watching your review with As, uh, and also from other viewers who were watching these reviews, was that it was inspired by real life events. And, you know, sometimes when you can take a real life event, something that was actually very uh, traumatic to people economically and socially mm. um, in that country and, and make, you know, just a, an excellent drama that is jarring, that is meant to be jarring um, and do it right. Um, I think it's it's amazing. Um, for me, the my favorite part of Squid Game, uh, it's obviously they do play games, but my favorite part is that they all get put into these uniforms and it kind of like. I always love when a, a movie does this because it erases any sort of like class system. If you, you, you know, are very wealthy, you have fancy clothes or if you're poor and you don't yep. have anything at all. And it, it, it puts you on the same level as everybody else. At least that's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Um, one thing that uh, bewildered me about squid game. And I asked this question, I did ask this question um, probably of you or someone else is why did they choose to have a, um, in the beginning of the story, that staircase, you know, the one that yeah, looks the M like the MC Escher, the endless staircase. Yes. Like there must be some reason why they decided to not just for the participants in the squid game, but for the viewer to see that. What was the, I mean, it looked really cool. It, it was gorgeous to look at, but I thought perhaps as a, you know, as a producer or a director or whatever, there was a reason why they chose that staircase. Is there a reason? Well, I think the original, the thing about the original painting is the staircase goes nowhere. And even, yeah. even the, the windows that are like, you see them out, they don't, they don't look onto anything. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a stairway that, you know, it's it just, it's an infinite stairway that promises taking you somewhere, but never really does. And I think that I, what I liked yeah, it's about kind it. kind of a metaphor maybe. Well, yeah, um, like, like it, like you're, you're that that staircase i mean to me it's like the staircase into oblivion or whatever if that's yeah. what you want to call it but um yeah i mean something i i i just uh, the way that it was colored the 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 pastels and the bright look at this isn't this staircase bright and shiny and fun i mean what was so interesting was that i loved all of the iconography was so childlike and happy with those pastel colors and yet the horrible, awful violence, all of these beautiful pastel colors were going to eventually be splattered in blood. And my one of my favorite images from the game was, I don't know if it was episode six, where they it begins and you see that when they've discovered, oh, look at Tolula's, Tolula's, yeah. hi Tolula, she can't hear, look at Tolula. Hi, oh, oh, Tolula, no. oh. Hi. Tolula Happy just New got, Year. Happy oh, New Year, Tolula's. Wow. Um, she's climbing up here. <laughs> she should, everyone loves when the doggos come on the show, and and she was groomed today, so she looks fantastic. She can't hear me talking. Hello, Tolulas. Oh, she look at that! I have the headphones. Come here, baby. <laughs> oh, but I mean, I I I do did. Oh, look at that! Oh, there she is. Look at that girl. Happy New Year, Tolula. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I, I, I mean, I liked, uh, look, I love Squid Game. I thought it was incredible, but that iconography was scary when they're, when the, when they found the, 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 uh, the organ harvesting operation and they hung those guys. It was incredible. Like watching, watching the contestants look up at, at the, their tormentors hung, <laughs> the dead bodies hanging. It was like, man, that was, that was a rough tableau. Well, I'm following Elizabeth's lead uh, when she says it's a metaphor. So um, maybe it was a metaphor just for, um, you know, they enter into the game thinking that their lives are going to change. And while it may be a change, it's it's just a change into the unknown. So, um, you know, it, there were promised money, promised this gift, which, you know, it's true. They were promised that. But in actuality, their odds of winning that are so low, you know, technically yeah. speaking. Totally. That, um, you know, I guess maybe once they realize that uh, that 
that it's not really even a possibility. It's it's just that their future going on those staircases is so unknown, unpredictable. That's why it's all in different directions. And 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 even the organ harvesting part, you know, uh, this this it's it's like maybe that's a metaphor for just how their value doesn't really as human beings doesn't mean anything to anyone. Mm. You know, uh, they can just kind of you know grab whatever they want from them, and you know. Uh, they don't mean anything anymore to anybody in society or anywhere. So, you know, just because they, they get killed or lost or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. But that, um, that viewer who said that it was based on an event that happened where uh, there was a protest, this, yep. is a, this is paraphrasing. So I may be getting this all wrong, but there was a protest and the protest um, resulted in people uh, getting fired and then they couldn't get rehired or get jobs. And of course that's devastating economically. Um, and politically for some of the individuals involved. So I thought that this was really uh, just a, t a testament to that. And, and I get it now, like it means even more with that, with that knowledge from, uh, from that person. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, I know that is absolutely true. By the way, Michael Preston says that we need to do the show in the same room. Yes, normally we do. This is the only time we haven't. This is a, just a one-off. This is a one-off bringing back because in 2022, for those of people who don't know, I'll tell you guys now, uh, I am returning to the John Campia show four times a week. Uh, he was like the godfather. He made me a, an offer I can't refuse. <laughs> and uh, when he made me the offer, I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm in. It's okay. I'm in, you know. So it's going to be a problem getting there. And it's, you know, it's still going to be, I don't know how it's going to, yeah, we'll, we'll, it'll all work out. It's fine. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. But we're going to bring back whining about movies the way we used to do it, with both of us in the same room. And uh, we will be reviewing movies. And, um, you know, it'll, it'll go back. And, Elizabeth, you know, one of the things that's exciting for you and one of the things I'm proud of proud of you about is that, you know, you're at Art Center, which is one of the most prestigious art colleges in the United States. And they did ask you to come on. You know, you're not quite full-on faculty, but you will be working yeah. or something right yeah um i'm teaching the drawing life drawing workshops so um you're just doing that c pain to... come on yeah totally totally yeah. <laughs> yeah i knew it come on come on man right, come on man. congratulations <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you oh, she's gonna see the big schlong uh it's gonna be good um uh by the way swack props is here I don't know if Ooh. Swack Props saw the video that we made tonight. What did we no, say? No, but I, I do have what he gave me. Hold on. Let me you have to it. explain. First of all, our friend Cal, Swack Props. Uh, Swack means the South Island of Indonesia. And uh, Swack Props creates amazing... Uh, he makes props from movies <clears throat> that have books or parchment maps stuff like that he his work is incredible and uh one of the reasons that i even took notice i mean i think he was already a member of the post geek singularity and was here but i looked him up once like on his etsy store and i i did not know this but he made books from one of my favorite a favorite movie of mine the ninth gate roman polanski's the ninth gate and he made the nine gates of the kingdom of heaven and i couldn't believe that he did that I freaked out and he sent me a copy and he sent me and the work, the work he does is it's better than, I, I mean, my first job was in the art department on Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 and to see the work, the kind of work he does, their Hollywood prop departments, the most, he does work that is at the top of the line. His work is unbelievable. Yeah, and he it's is pretty amazing. He's amazing. And he sent like Elizabeth, explain the story. What did you do on this show? What did you say on this show? Yeah, so we reviewed Donnie Darko and I just off the cuff said, Oh, I think Swack Props should make the time travel book that's in that movie. And <laughs> several months later, I get in the mail the book, the time travel book from Donnie Darko. And it was amazing and I absolutely love it. It's on my desk. And then uh, this Christmas, we get a package, and it's two wrapped gifts, uh, one for me, one for Rob, and uh, I put it on their tree. 
uh, we decided to save it until tonight. And mm -hmm. earlier, we uh, we made um we made a, a video opening these gifts, and this is what I got. Which is on it's on the Facebook page. Wow! Oh my God, yeah. it looks incredible. <gasps> he made this. It's, it's oh wow! It's now, freaking amazing. Um, <gasps> now. Uh, I've noticed that Connie Connie Sang is in the chat, and she just said Happy New Year's, everyone. Uh, she has, yeah. Connie has been watching Hellraiser, and I'm a huge, huge, huge Hellraiser fan. And um, so the Labyrinth book, come on, that's cool. Everyone wow, loves Labyrinth. Really cool. It's it's awesome. But one of the great <laughs> things that I love about what what Cal does. Uh, is he creates so here oh, is the lament configuration explanation basically wow and if you look i mean if you can see how he weathers the paper you know i mean he did it, it his work is so incredible i mean it's so like i have to get this framed like a big a big frame now the great thing about the books he makes, like Elizabeth, you can pick them up and like show show the like it's not just a like there's 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 printing in there. Like, oh yeah, it's it's the entire book is it's incredible. Uh, it's unbelievable. Wow. It's, it even has like this ribbon uh, uh, bookmark. <clears throat> oh, it's it's. Uh, and the it's, cover is amazing. It, it's, yeah, I mean, this the stuff that, that Cal does, it's so, like, I've shown um, his map to the Misty Mountains from The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings. And, like, he even puts the rune stones that you can only see with a UV light in. The, the guy's, he's a genius. I mean, he's a genius. <laughs> yeah. And you can go to, it's S apostrophe W-A-K props, two words. Mm -hmm. Um, his work is, is just beyond cool. I mean, he sent me, he sent me Rorschach's diary from Watchmen. I mean, it's, it's, his work is incredible. It's just incredible. And I, he, he actually makes uh Henry Jones grail diary from Indiana Jones and the last crusade, which is in with all the swag that comes swag, not just swag, but swag that's in that book. Um, the guy's, he's fucking amazing. I mean, it's unbelievable. If you want to give somebody a, like, if you know someone who's a Hellraiser fan, like I am, I mean, you get this stuff and it's like, I want to, I got to frame this in like a big, long thing where you can see all four pieces. I mean, this is, totally. this is fucking amazing. It's amazing. And you can read the whole, it's incredible. I mean, his, his work is incredible. And so we just opened these tonight. So thanks, Cal. Yes, thank you. Um, really cool. Go to go to Swack Props Etsy store, and you can buy stuff, and it's awesome. So, yeah. But now, now back to back to the entertainment. Let me ask the two of you. Um, obviously, you know, with COVID, and we watch like Elizabeth and I watch King Richard with Will Smith, which we both loved, right, Elizabeth? Yeah. But. Yeah. You know, it, it was day and date on HBO Max, and it didn't do very well at the box office. And how do you guys feel about the fact that the movie theaters are only they're only making money if the films are epic or huge tentpole properties? How do you feel about the state of movies and streaming when movies like King Richard are only going to do well on? streaming services that we're not going to see those kinds of movies in the theater what do you guys think about that yeah i kind of have mixed feelings um you know i'm kind of sad that um these these films that are not these huge films are not going to be seen in a, th in a theater although i do i do like the convenience of being able to watch them streaming and and i do feel guilty about that uh, but, yeah, goddamn um, right the, you should the, feel guilty about that. <laughs> but Traitor. I love being able to access it so easily, you know, and to watch it whenever I feel like it. Um, 
but I do feel sad about not seeing them in a theater um, and not having that experience. Um, yeah, yeah as, I mean, as well you should. The world is changing. Uh, Sophie was upset that Spider-Man wasn't streaming. She's like, why isn't it on HBO? I don't want to go to a theater. I want to see it right now. I was like, are you crazy? She's part That's of the goddamn the kind of problem, these see. kids today. Fuck them. Go to the movie yeah, theaters. They, they expect everything to be streaming now, and they get upset. Yeah, and that sucks that they do. The younger generation is ruining the world. I'm just kidding. Yeah. They're not totally yeah, ruining Yeah, I mean, they just are. watch YouTube and, and those kind of things. Like, everything is equal. Movies, shows, it doesn't matter um, to them. It's equal with everything that is streaming. Yeah, that's the problem. They're idiots. They all like Star Trek Discovery. Oh, wait, what? Hang on. What I say? I'm well, sorry. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, I, I don't even think they know what Star Trek Discovery is. Oh, that's hope. That's hopeful. I hope mm -hmm. not. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Connie Sang says, Happy New Year's, everyone. A 200 Watt Studio says that his favorite show of 2021 is Cobra Kai Season 4, which oh. just dropped. Haven't watched it. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You a Cobra Kai fan? I am. I have not watched season four, but I've heard nothing but spectacular reviews for it. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, it just dropped. So, I mean, uh, look, Cobra Kai is one of the great revivals of all time. It's, I mean, I haven't watched, I watched the first, uh, the first season was on, or the first two seasons were on YouTube, YouTube Red. And, um, I watched the, there. It was an incredible revival. I couldn't believe it even worked. And the fact that they chose to focus on the villain, you know, and make him sympathetic, it was amazing. And the yeah, fact it, that, I it mean, was amazing. Yeah. Well, Sorry. I mean, what do you think? No, no. What do you think? I mean, how do you feel about bringing back a, a 35 year old property? And Cobra Kai made it relevant, it did it right. But, Hollywood is mired in this. Um, let's let's bring back these old properties again, as opposed to making something new. I mean, what how, what are they going to do in twenty years? Remake the remakes? <laughs> I mean, how do you feel well, about they, that? Probably they remade um, Nightmare Alley, and it was a beautiful remake. You know, I saw that remake they did, and although the advertising was not up to par. Um, the remake was just wonderful. But what they did with Cobra Kai that I liked was that there was a time jump. And, um, you know, they didn't decide to kind of like remake the Karate Kid, so to speak. Right. Um, in, and set it in the 80s. You know, they didn't do that. And I, you know, I have to be honest with you, you know. Um, what, have you ever been yeah. dishonest with me? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, what I liked what they did was that, you know, they were just kids, uh, Daniel and the, and, and, and his opponent, they were just children really fighting in this tournament. And, you know, life does kind of continue after this and, and what happens with that. And the popularity of martial arts has always, uh, as I felt, I felt has just increased since the eighties. Um, mm. and so, you know, why not kind of, you know, go into that and, and, and figure out how people, would handle a situation like that or a similar situation like that today and this rivalry or the idea that you know one dojo versus another or or one style versus another is a, an ongoing theme in in martial arts in general and i love it i think that that the idea of that um continues on through uh you know from the films obviously but also like let's say through through the series as well so um you know there is interest in that and it, it just doesn't get old. They did it right. You know, we have the original, you know, the two actors, which is nice. Um, they they just know knew what they were doing. And they, of course, had respect for the original material. So um, those things are always going to be, uh, you know, looked at and, and, and kind of praised. Um, you know, they didn't drastically make changes uh, like we've been seeing or try to go back to the 80s, which I think would have been a mistake. So... Well, it's interesting, Elizabeth, I would ask you, I mean, we saw Spider-Man No Way Home. I, I think somebody's mad that I I made a spoiler in my uh, 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 <laughs> show the other day. The, uh, it's like, uh -oh. look, I mean, if you haven't, but I would, I would ask Elizabeth, I mean, 
we watched Spider-Man No Way Home and they brought back Willem Dafoe from 2002. You know, they yeah. brought back um, Dr. Octopus, Octavio, Oct Oct Octavio, uh, uh, Otto Octavius from Spider-Man 2. They brought back Thomas Hayden Church as a Sandman from Spider-Man 3. And of yeah. course, they they brought back Electro and the, the Lizard from the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. And they brought back both Spider-Man. How do you feel about um, this idea of tapping into nostalgia, bringing back these characters uh, next year? We're going to see, or now, pardon me, this year, we're going to see Michael Keaton as Batman again, teamed up with Ben Affleck's Batman and The Flash. I mean, how do you feel about all these reboots and bringing these actors forward into these franchises that are, 20 years or 30 years old is it a good thing well i mean it depends um some reboots are terrible and i'm not normally um one to be a fan of the reboots uh like i have not seen the matrix but i really wasn't interested in seeing it i know you were excited about it uh i just was like why are you doing this this is weird i i don't just leave a good thing like why are you messing with it it just seems so strange. I have not watched it. I am having a hard time wanting to watch it. <laughs> so <clears throat> I have not. Uh, I'd rather Tallulah, would you not... watch it? She doesn't. No, she's with me. She looks um... great, though, man. She looks great. She's just. <laughs> I think she's she's hearing some some fireworks, and that's why she's in my lap right now. Mm. Um, she's shaking a little bit, but. Um... Yeah, so I'm not a huge fan of reboots, but I'm a fan of nostalgia. I don't know. I know that's a bad word, especially in the art field, but I don't care. Um, I, I love I love reminiscing about my childhood, about the things I watched when I was younger. I love that. So um, when it's done right, I think it's a great thing. And I have to say, for the Spider-Man uh, movie, I think it worked really, really well. And um, I'm a fan. It was a it was a really good movie. All right, ladies. I enjoyed it. Book of Boba Fett. What's up? How do you feel? How do you feel? I mean, I'm surprised at the negative reaction that Boba Fett has been getting. What do you think? Yeah, I'm surprised that there is any negativity towards it. You know, what I said uh, in regards to how I felt about the Book of Boba Fett was really just two things. Um, you know, the first thing that I was going to say, and so then uh, if I say spoilers, is it okay to do spoilers on here? Yeah, spoil the shit out of it. Come on, man. Okay. So, drinking. It's New Year's totally. Eve. If you're going to no, go I like, Rob, say that spoil before. it on your stream. This is Let totally me... a spoiler show. Bruh. I mean, when we talk okay. about movies, we spoil the entire movie. So. Yeah. Okay. With, well, go with for that, it. Yeah. With that said, um, what I was going to say is that um, for the book of Boba Fett, um, I gave it, you know, I don't really like to give scores for like the first episode of a of a series, but I gave it an eight out of 10. And the reason why was because, um, you know, you know, he's in this back to tank and, you know, he sleeps while he's in this back to tank while Boba Fett is, you know, kind of, you know, undergoing uh, any uh, it's going to repair the damage in his body. And, and I thought, you know, when when you're in a back to tank. You know, what do you dream of? You know, I know that when I go to sleep, I, you know, sometimes you have good dreams and you have bad dreams. But Boba Fett is a person who has things that are apparently on his mind. And I was curious. I wanted to see a dream of Boba Fett. And it was great to see him with the Tuskins. And it was great to see, you know, the sad things that happened. But I wanted to see that moment where he did something in his past that shocked me. I wanted to see Boba Fett's un unfiltered, uncensored dream of whatever it was that motivates him to go ahead and take over as the crime lord. And I didn't see that. And I was kind of wanting to see that because now, I mean, think about it. We're in his dreams. We're it's, it's a very uh, special place to be. And we should have free reign in there where we get to see stuff that he probably wouldn't verbally tell anyone. So I, I agree with you. I feel like we should have seen that. In fact, I was waiting to see him do something and just be like, oh, my God, what did Boba Fett do? That's what I was waiting for. Um, and I didn't see that. Um, so for me, that was the only thing that I'm still waiting for that. I'm sure it's going to come. I'm sure we're going to see this. And it's going to be like, he what? You know, like, oh, my God. So I'm 
just waiting for that moment that grabbed me because overall, like looking at that episode, there wasn't anything that made me necessarily feel like I have to watch the second episode. I'm not, there wasn't, there wasn't any sort of motivation for me to say, I've got to find out what, what's going on with Boba. Why did he do that? That didn't happen. So that's my only uh, thing that I feel was wanting. Other than that, I thought that the world that they created, the Star Wars uh, environment was lovely. I love Jennifer Beals as the Twi'lek. Um, and I'm trying, I'm gonna do her cosplay for sure. Um, I loved the male and female Twi'leks, which was kind of nice to see a male Twi'lek um, in the cantina. I wanna go to the cantina. Look, man, totally. if I was Boba Fett, I would have I would be like I would be tearing off Jennifer Beale's uh underpants with my teeth. I'd put my rangefinder and helmet aside and get some get some work done. Uh I don't understand like Boba Fett's a bad guy. He's a bad dude. And and there was no there was no essence, there was no inkling that I oh, Jabba ruled by intimidation. I'm gonna rule by respect. What? Uh, my he whole must thing, have some regrets, right? No, but he I'm like, I'm like, regrets. Boba Fett is a bad dude. I mean, he's and yeah. and they want to make him because people like him. They're going to make him because I I think the problem here's the thing: Star Wars, the universe of Star Wars, is a bad place. There is slavery. Jabba the Hutt, if he doesn't like that you're dancing, he will throw you in a pit. And watch you get devoured. A woman get devoured, and his menagerie will watch you get devoured by a rancor. Um, uh, Anakin's mother was basically sold into sexual slavery and servitude to the Sand People. I mean, it's a horrible place. And this idea, I think, with the Disney shows, we've been talking about this on other streams. They want to make like Boba Fett because everyone likes Boba Fett. Like, we, we, he's a badass. Let's make him this honorable guy. And I'm like, uh, he's not an honorable guy. He's a very bad, bad. He's a guy. He's he's even worse than Darth Vader, because Darth Vader, Darth Boba Fett is the guy that Darth Vader hires to get the job done. That's how bad Boba Fett is. So to make him like this, well, I'm gonna be an honorable crime boss. I'm like, you're not Vito Corleone, bro. You're a bad dude. And what they're trying to do with that first episode is turn him into somebody noble. I mean, my, I would say my favorite thing in the episode was when the 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 uh, the Star Wars holiday special sand kid uh, who you know, they, they had fought the Ray Harry House and monster and the sand people like, well, son, you, you, you uh, and, and my favorite thing in the episode was when the leader of the sand people doesn't even look at Boba Fett and just hands him those one of those gourds so he can drink the water out of it. That was it. That was my favorite thing because it's like, okay, now this is the Boba Fett show that I want to see where sand people are bad. They're bad. Sand people are bad. They're dangerous. They will fuck you up. Yeah, they and... seemed a little, little bit too easy to, uh, to manipulate and get along with. Um, I mean, I was so looking forward to this. Because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. You would ask me every week, when Star Wars coming back? Why do we have to watch Hawkeye yeah, again? Where's Star like Wars coming back? Come on. It was like all these Marvel shows. And I was like, okay, but when is there going to be another Star Wars show? When the, when is Star Wars coming? When is Star Wars? Oh, don't worry. Book of Boba Fett is coming. And it finally came. And I was just super excited to watch it. And it just, it just was kind of flat for me. Um, even though I'm still going to watch it I, because I love Star Wars. Um, I, and and I never understood this obsession with Boba Fett. I mean, he was in the movie for like, what, a few seconds? And um, I didn't even realize there was this whole community around, you know, this obsession with him. Well, I showed uh, you, I it's funny because I showed you the documentary and you were like, there's a documentary about Boba Fett? Yeah, I'm like, what? This, this character was barely in the movies and I, you know, because I was not surrounded by this nerd community, I, I just, for me, like I, I didn't know that Wait, what? He, it was a thing. I mean, when I was younger, before I met you, I just knew the things I liked and I didn't, I wasn't hanging out with people who, who liked the same. Wait, can we just did. back up and say that being surrounded by a nerd community is not a bad thing. Can, can you just, it's not like... a bad thing. I love it. Okay. I love it. But, but what I'm I just want to make sure because, like, 
people are about to like abandon this channel and they're going to be like rob is oh, a no, fraud goodness, it's okay great. So you know. it's great it's okay. great but I when just didn't know. i understand what she's talking about because when we were growing up it was harder to make those connections because we didn't have the internet yeah. we didn't have all those exactly. things i just liked the things i liked and and um i mean i i saw the movie in the theater and uh you know everyone in school saw the movie in the theater like we were all obsessed with it right but I was not obsessed with Bubba Fett. I didn't even know anybody who was. So, you know, growing up and then becoming an adult, I didn't even know that was a thing. So, um, it was a dude thing. Chicks were not in Bubba Fett. They <laughs> weren't. Like, and the it's, and the, it's not me being a sexist pig. Chicks <laughs> did not dig Bubba because Bubba Fett no, is we such were a all dude Princess thing. Leia for Halloween. Yes. All of yeah. us. Every single one mm. of us was Princess Leia for Halloween mm -hmm. every yes. year mm -hmm. for so many years. <laughs> yes. You know, right? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. So, uh, yeah, I, I didn't get the whole Bubba Fett thing, but it didn't matter. I, I, I love Star Wars, so I was very happy uh, that there was another show. I loved The Mandalorian, so I was super excited to see this show. And um, I did not hate the first episode, but I'm like, I'm wanting to see where it's going to go. I did too. Like I, I told, I, I said to people, it's the preface, and the next six episodes are the book. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my whole thing is, is I, I find it odd that like Disney wants to Boba Fett ship is the slave one. It's been the slave one since 1980, and now they're like, well, you know, the the connotations of like, um, slavery has been around since human beings cr climbed out of the trees. It was around for thousands of years before black Africans were brought to America. And slavery is, is a, has been a part of, of, of sentient life forever. So the idea in the Star Wars universe, um, we saw Anakin's mother. Uh, Anakin himself was a slave owned by Watto. It's just mm -hmm. Watto was a, a benevolent slave owner. If you want to build, if you want to build a pod racer or a, a protocol droid go right ahead but it was still slavery and the idea that disney wants to make these characters sanitized and somehow sanitize like it's not like star wars is gonna lay how it, it, it's not a social justice universe it's a bad universe the star wars universe is not it's not all hunky dory there's bad people that do bad things bad bad huts that do bad things and it's weird to me that they want to they want to make the star wars universe kid friendly and and i think this is a mistake that in our modern age in the last 30 years the idea that we've infantilized children on one hand will give them bart simpson as a role model somebody that 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 completely flies in the face of authority, does not want to become smart or amazing. Um, come on, man, you know, whatever. That's for the last 30 years, Bart Simpson is, and then kids are way smarter than adults is a really weird trope that American um, entertainment has put forward. And I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's been a gradual... Um degradation of respect for people who are more knowledgeable and older and um, have more experience than you. And it shows up now in society, in classrooms, it shows up everywhere in, on social media. It doesn't matter what your experience or your knowledge is. Everyone's equal, even if you're 18 or you're, you know, 60 and you have all this, experience. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore. And, and I think that, yeah, things like the Simpsons and, um, uh, what's that one that I hate? Um, the really dis disrespectful one, Rob, you know, the, the, the animated, oh, come on. South Park. <laughs> yes. Come on. How do you hate South Park? His come on. <laughs> it's, it's too much for me. Um, I didn't, I didn't grow up that way like i i respected my elders like i i uh you know the, 
being sent to the principal's office was like a horrible thing growing up. And, and, and now they don't even send kids to the principal's office. They just call the parent. And yeah, they don't. They can't to, because like, because if you do, that's like trauma. You you can't traumatize. I mean, tr- the the fact that we infantilize, yeah. like somehow kids are, we've made it so. Oh, oh, these poor kids. They can't. They can't. I mean, listen, man, smack those kids' asses. I mean, I mean, I I got. If if I got in trouble, my parents were pretty benevolent. But if I did something bad, I mean, if I got the hairbrush on my ass, it was it was, it was a deterrent. Look, if you were sent to the principal's office and then they called your parents, like that was the end of the world. Like, yes, it was, it was the end horrible. of the fucking world. It was. It was the end of the world. And now it's like they don't even send the kids to the principal's office and they just call the parent. And the parent is just like, you know, what are they supposed to do? The parent's like, There's what like, are you no, saying? My like, child isn't <clears throat> perfect? Yeah, they'll defend the kid. Like, uh, I, anyway, I, look, so, man, if I, I got a... That, like, I think like shows like The Simpsons and other shows have really degraded uh, respect for authority and for, you know, uh, there are people who are more knowledgeable than you. And when you're growing up, like you need to listen to that, whether you agree with it or not. How did we get on this subject? I don't know. (laughs) I mean, we're talking what we're talking about. We're talking about Star Wars. Right. And 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 ultimately what I look, Disney is Disney. And I really respect Disney. I mean, I've been accused of being a Disney shill. And I look, I love the MCU because I'm watching comic books I read as a kid writ large on the big screen. I love it. It's been hit and miss, you know, up and down, whatever. Not everything is perfect, but for the most part, it's it's it, it it's it's the cinematic equivalent of being a Marvel Comics fan. And people are like, oh, Robert, that's a Disney shill. Yeah, I wish. Pay me some money. I'll, hey, look. If you want to pay me money, I'll tell, I'll, I'll, I'll say whatever you made is the most wonderful thing ever. I'm not beyond that, but I'll tell you. I will say, I'll flat out go. So and so paid me to say, your show is amazing. Well, no one's paid me to say anything is amazing. I liked Matrix Resurrections. I did. I enjoyed it for a number of reasons. Um, I wasn't paid, but I do think this idea that now that. These franchises are owned corporations. Uh, the the interests of corporations are diametrically opposed to telling great stories. And this idea that Disney as a corporation has a core brand. Um, I mean, when you when you say to the Disney execs, you're like, you know that Star Wars is about. Uh, a rebel faction that fucks up the 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 ruling class, and you know that there's slavery, there's drug use, there is degradation. I mean, they want to believe Star Wars is one step away from Cinderella, and even Cinderella has a bad stepmother and those horrible sisters. Um, but they don't they don't want to make um, Star Wars bad. And so well, Boba Fett, who should be a re- Boba Fett, should be Alex from A Clockwork Orange. He should be a really bad, bad, bad guy. But they're like uh, Jabba ruled with fear. Well, I, will I don't rule know with respect. I don't know about c- equating it to Clockwork Orange. Come on, Rob. I mean, it is. Oh, Star why not? It, it, it was. It was made for kids. And uh, but back then, okay, it, no, it wasn't. Could, it was made for kids everyone. Could handle. No, it was made for kids, and but that's what George then, Lucas kids... said later. Because because okay. he was perplexed that George Lucas does not understand why Star yeah. Wars was so successful. Okay, he doesn't but get it. He made it, so um, it's his. It it exists in his brain, like he created it. Yeah, he made <clears throat> a Phantom Menace too. Just saying. Yeah, he did. Misa don't understand why George Mesa makes a fan of menace. <laughs> anyway, sorry. What do you uh, think? Uh, mm? Weigh in on this. Well, you know, I think that we saw some scenes in uh, the book of Boba Fett where it looked like Boba was going to maybe get people um, to pay attention to him using force. For example, when... Um, 
when the mayor's uh, entourage or, or, or delegate came in to, and everybody was offering him tribute, mm. giving him, uh, you know, gifts or whatever. And people had different things, you know, like some people had money, some people had, you know, the special cloth or whatever it was. And the guy came in there very smug talking about how he wasn't going to offer him anything. And, and I thought, um, you know, uh, I think Boba Fett should have said something like, well, put it, let me see his head on a platter, you know, that'll be a gift for me <laughs> or something like that. Um, you know, it's not that I, I doubt Boba Fett's intentions about what he's trying to do, but I think maybe he is saving himself some energy by not having to fight as much as he would if he came in there, you know, guns blazing because he's sick. Like Boba Fett is in that bank back to tank. I have a feeling that he's not as well as he appears to be. And, you know, um, he has right. some issues. Do you think, do you think he's going to die at the end of the show? It is called the book of Boba Fett. I, um, I think that if he doesn't make a clone soon, he's not going to have anybody to pass his legacy on to. So maybe he, he might expire and he's lived an incredible life. I mean, this is, I'm, I've, I know a little bit more about his history, mainly just through the comics. Like I watch the comics on YouTube because there are some great people out there who will serialize, they'll read it and they'll show you parts of the comics of Boba Fett and, and his uh, history there. And of course the clone wars, we had a lot of, uh, his early years there, but there's a lot in there. He's lived a, an incredible life if they if they stick to those stories. Yeah. And yeah, maybe he won't make it. And, you know, I kind of had made a joke about, well, how often does he go in that back to tank? Is he abusing the back to tank? You know, I kind of made a joke about it. But in actuality, it seems like he's pretty dependent on that back to tank. Because think about it. He came out of the Sarlacc pit, what was it, like five years ago? And now he's still kind of going in the back to tank. You know what injuries did he sustain? And oh, I, I think how bad has, are they? I think he has a terminal illness. I think Boba Fett's dying, and I, 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 which I actually love. Now, you know, Elizabeth, you, I have to say, you have really good taste in terms of, like, the stuff that I've shown you. If if I show you something bad, you're like that, bro. Why'd you show it to me? Body melt. You know what? <laughs> But uh, and you're, you you have a, a pretty good taste about all this stuff. Now, I would ask you, like, you didn't understand. You're like, what? what Boba Fett? What? Like, you didn't know. So I showed you that Disney documentary. Now, you watching the first episode, how do you feel about the character of Boba Fett? Do you find him compelling? Was, was like, for me, I don't even understand why people would offer him tribute. Like, who the fuck is that guy? Like, fuck off, dude. You killed Jabba. The, you took. You killed Bib Fortuna, who was a chump. Anyway, he was a mouthpiece for Jabba. Great. So you're going to live in that, like, place? Why should we fear you? I mean, I, yeah, I don't... I, yeah. They didn't show why people were giving him tribute. Like, you usually give tribute to a guy that's, like, really scary. You want to make sure that he's not going to hurt you. You want to make sure, like... Like, hey, uh, uh, you know, here, here's a bunch of money. Here's a bunch of gold or whatever. Uh, don't hurt me. Right. Uh, kind of like a mob king. Uh, you know, you don't you do you want to give him what he wants. Um, but it didn't really seem to show why they would do that. Besides that, he, you know, he killed Jabba the Hutt. I mean, but I guess maybe that's reason enough. I don't know. Um, but is it? I just feel like. I just feel like, you know, this was the first episode and it's really hard to judge it harshly until I see more when it was like 35 minutes long, 38 minutes long. 38 minutes long. Um, so it's it's really hard to judge it. And there were things that, that kind of bothered me, like um, when they're digging in the sand and they're, they're finding those water shells right under the surface. Um, <laughs> That and scene was lame. They show, when he's they show digging. him hours later and he's still digging just on the surface and finding these water shells. And then, like, they immediately are drinking out of these water shells. It's like you're not even, like, breaking a seal or something. Like, how is the water not spilling out? I don't know. That was confusing to me. And I was like, that's weird. That and It was, it was bad. That was bad. That was just flat out bad. Yeah. And then why would they send a kid out to watch over him? Why? Because he had this, the lizard dog thing with him, maybe? I don't know. 
No, there, there were was... a few minor things that were like, eh, that's kind of weird. Uh, um, what do you think? <clears throat> yeah. Um, uh, what's interesting for at least, uh, I did, like I said, I did enjoy seeing those parts with the Tuscan Raiders. I enjoyed seeing them in different clothing, like a different tribe, or maybe, yep. you know, uh, I felt that it's nice to learn about Tuscan Raider culture because, you know, we've only seen. You know, I'm not going to say completely negative. I think in The Mandalorian, we got to see a few scenes of where they can cooperate with others. But remember, this is their land and, you know, everybody else is encroaching on their territory. And so from their point of view, everybody who is there are, are really people who are kind of like bothering them. And they feel that they're taking their resources, especially like people who are mining or doing whatever on, on the planet. So so they have a different point of view from from everyone else. And there's a lot that we ha we really don't know. I mean, I don't know about them uh, personally because I haven't read a lot of, of the Star the Star Wars lore that talks about what's important to Tusken Raiders and what they value. I mean, I know that they value their Banthas a lot, but um, you know, there's more to them than meets the eye and we knew this. And I, I about my own criticism uh, with the part where he dreamt about them was just like, I understand that that was a pivotal moment in, while he's there, but it was, you know, it's a condensed version. And, you know, I maybe the Tuscan Raiders will come to his aid later on, and that's why they needed to show more uh, interaction with them. But it was something that could have been solved with, you know, uh, I spent time with the Raiders, and that would have been like the end of it. You know, you, you would have seen them walking in in the in the desert with them, and um, and I learned to and I learned to build their trust, and that could have been the end of it. We made we didn't even need to see any more Tuscan Raiders necessarily, but um, uh, it's it's it is what it is, and I'm fine with what we saw. And those I think those um, things that he was digging with, you do have to like break into them in order to get the water out. I mean, I've from what I've seen in some other depictions of it, you know, you like press into it, and then and then you can get to the water because you can't. Yeah, just, they, but. They didn't do a good job of <clears> – <throat> look, my, my biggest criticism of Boba Fett, and I hate to say this, was it was directed by Robert Rodriguez, and I, I expected a lot more from him. I thought the, the action scenes were, were lackadaisical, and I think the editing – like I would have cut 10 frames off every edit <coughs> only to make it a little bit more exciting. I mean – I like the fact they, they had to explain how did he get out of the Sarlacc pit. But why is there a stormtrooper there? Like, he literally sees... There was no stormtrooper. There, there were people that fell off Jabba's sail barge. Like, uh, people like, what, was it Weequay or whatever? The uh, Why is there a stormtrooper there? And then Boba Fett pulls out, like... Uh, it's not like the air isn't coming in from the maw of the Sarlacc, and and it was it was weird. Like there was no stormtrooper in Return of the Jedi that fell into the Sarlacc pit. Where did that stormtrooper come from? And it was kind of bizarre. And and when you see him take out, I feel that I know John Favreau wrote this episode, but and I'm I'm I've been enjoying what they did with the Mandalorian, but I felt that um, there was a lot of wackiness in Boba Fett. There was a lot of, there was a lot of, like, they want, the Mandalorian is the man with no name. I yes. get that. Boba Fett is not the man with no name. Boba Fett is a really bad guy. He's a guy that, holy shit. What are you, what's going on? Your mom is uh, in, oh, that's, you scared the shit out of me. I'm, she's in her uh, room streaming. Oh, I'm in the room. No, it's all good. All good. <laughs> that was Sophie. She's going to come in and see <laughs> Elizabeth. I, is it a garage door or something like that? That was a garage door. Yeah. You just heard the door of the Rob Observatory open live. <laughs> but you know what? That's why people watch live shows. So yeah. tell Sophie it's okay <laughs> that she comes in. Um, Happy New Year just, to her. That just scared the shit out of me. I was like, you know, when someone opens the door, I'm like, hey, we're in Pasadena. Somebody can gun me down. Like, what? You know, who knows? But I, I mean, I just feel that the book of Boba Fett was. I, I feel that the the first episode, I I enjoyed it, but I felt it was very schizophrenic. <laughs> it needed more blood. It, um, like I said, I as I as I mentioned earlier, I'm repeating myself. Uh, but I wanted to see what was in his dreams. 
because you know he's seen some bad things out there and people begging him to set them free, you know, like he's bringing the bounties in, you know, like why not something with someone saying, please don't, don't bring me in, you know, or like, let's just see that the, the, the harshness and the atrocities that he's seen. And I wanted to be sure well, the atrocities he's perpetrated. Yes, I wanted to be shocked by what Boba has seen. And I, that's what I wanted to him to be thinking about when he's in the back to tank. That's what I wanted to see what haunts Boba Fett in his dreams. I wanted to go, oh, my gosh, Boba. Oh, what a horrible thing. You know, like and then I would have been like, wow, this is this is getting really whew, this is getting. I mean, really, here's you know, the thing. I, it, it, you know, it's deep. like I mean, my my in, in my in my realm, I mean, Fennec Shand Ming Na, who's what fifty eight years old, smoking mm -hmm. hot. Bob was yes. like, uh, "Come here, little lady. Get take that armor off. And let me throw down. I mean, come on now. The Star Wars universe is the most sexless universe <laughs> of all time. They're like, well, they haven't they haven't shown us the sex uh, at all, right, Elizabeth, because the Twi'leks are known for being very sexual, sensual people, and we saw that in the cantina. They were all up in there. They were like, "Hey, can we do anything for you?" How and about I'm the like, two the two twins can. who were looking at Luke, going, "Look at that young buck." Yeah, could, I mean, like Jennifer Beals is also fifty eight or fifty nine. And my and God, she, I mean, Boba Fett, I'm telling you, would be taking off his helmet. Going down on her and making her come with the just practice touch of his Mandalorian tongue. Come on, what's up? And we don't well, get any of that. I, I I feel that I feel the sexless nature of the Star Wars universe is becoming a problem. It's becoming a problem because look, half of our fan. Uh, look, I get it. I understand we're all geeks, but my God, I mean. Jennifer Beals is hot. Twi'leks are hot. They dance. They're hot. I mean, uh, let's face it. Boba Fett should want to fuck Jennifer Beals. He should walk up to her and walk up and be like, uh, yo, um, you have no idea the kind of pleasure that I could give to you. But in this universe, it's Disney+. Plus. So, no, there is no Boba Fett chowing on Jennifer Beals punani. None of that shit. I mean, there should be. Because Boba Fett should take that helmet off. The only time his helmet should come off is when he goes to work on the women he knows and he blows them away. He's the greatest lover ever and he doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> That's what I would well, do. I'd be like, Boba Fett, come on now. But there was never, there was never that kind of stuff in Star Wars. So yeah, but that's a, that's problematic that now. now. In Star Wars, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. but Elizabeth, I mean, don't you want to see Star Wars peeing? Was, Come on, you want to see Gamorrean guard peeing? What's in up this, in the slave? I always want to see peeing, but I don't know if you'll never see that in Star Wars. Hang on, well. wait, wait, hang on. I, honestly, Wait, hold on. Much less Star Wars. You're th for whatever reason you are there's you're you're out of sync. Is she in sync? Are we in uh -oh. out of sync now? No, she's out of sync. Am I out of sync? Yep. No, she seems oh man. Is she? Yeah, look. It's okay. It doesn't matter. We'll talk. It's fine. But I want to talk more about what tell me about what peen you want to see. Like lay it out between you and uh, mm, I mean the full on let's have the Star Wars sex no. talk. It's the most sexless goddamn universe ever. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see peen in Star Wars. It just doesn't make sense. I well, think Tamora <laughs> Morrison is a, a good looking man. You know, He's I a sexy I find him dude, attractive. Dude. And, you know, it's I don't necessarily need to see him, you know, full frontal, but you know, I would like to see some romance. I mean, this man is a passionate guy. And, you know, I just in some of the stories, I know he has a family and then there's a, a backstory to that in some of the comics and, and maybe even in some of the, the books. But, you know, I just can't believe that this man has gone without anyone in his life this long. I just he's, but he's hanging out with that. Fennec Shand. She's hot as fuck. It's like, come on, dude. I mean, he should be like, hey, if, if you want to be part of my tribe, uh, let's spend the night together. And not in a in a in a rapey way, but in a, like uh, we're gonna have a bonding because I will take you to heights you've never been to, 
because this is the Star Wars universe and no one ever gets laid. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't why wouldn't you know Boba? I mean, Boba Fett should have been like, oh my god, Fennec Shan is hot as fuck. The first thing I'm going to do after I come out of my back to tank is take a shower and take this girl to town, yo. But it seems like he doesn't even have energy for that. You know, this injury that he has or whatever it is where he has to have a back to tank literally in his quarters. It's not sort of like off in a hospital ward. No, he's uh, clearly Boba Fett is dying. There's something going on with him. No, he's dying. You know, I'm guessing maybe he he doesn't partake in 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 that sort of thing. But um, I don't see Fennec doing anything like that with him. However, I wouldn't it would have made sense to see him with someone and it doesn't have to be twilight it could be somebody who means something to him if he had lost someone and we found out that he lost this person and that's who he's looking for or his daughter i think there was some story Come on. where he had boba a, fett a, does not have some long lost daughter boba well, fett, boba fett will <laughs> sell someone's daughter into slavery <laughs> boba fett is a bad bad dude right well, wouldn't that be something if he did have some sort of uh, biological child out there? <laughs> no, <laughs> or clone, no, or clone. no. That, but that's that's the thing. No, Boba Fett is a bad. <laughs> the whole point is we loved him because he was bad, and now mm-hmm. er, they're trying to make him. He's not really bad. I I don't understand this idea of why can't we have anti heroes anymore? I mean, like true anti heroes, like. Like, I want to love Boba Fett, but I want to love him because he's a fucking motherfucker. He's a bad, bad, bad dude. And now they're trying to make him, we're all supposed to love him. Like, oh, look at him. He's going to rule with respect. Fuck that. Well, I mean, rule with wait, the where respect. Did you, where ahead, did you get me. the idea that he's a super bad dude? Like, we don't know anything about him. He just. Um, was a bounty uh, hunter. The Empire Strikes Back. <clears throat> he, he's a bounty hunter that. He, dart. Darth Vader hires Boba Fett to find the Millennium Falcon and Han Solo. Yeah. Somebody that if if Darth Vader is hiring you to do a job, <laughs> you're a bad motherfucker and it's not because you're carrying a wallet that says so. I mean Boba Fett is the baddest motherfucker along with Forlom and Zuckus and Dengar and whatever. I mean, yes, I know my bounty hunters but still i it, it's like he's a bad motherfucker he's the baddest of all he was the motherfucker who knew that han solo would hide the millennium falcon on the back of a star destroyer and sneak away in the garbage he knew that he was one step ahead of han solo that's how bad he is and and like he's like uh, you know how long first of all people don't understand the empire strikes back is a movie that takes place over months. Months. The Millennium Falcon did not just fly off to Bespin it, because they didn't have hyperdrive. It took them months to get there. Luke was training on Dagobah for months. I, it just looked I, like it was like a couple of days. No, it was, it was a long time. I would say it was almost maybe even a year. Maybe. But people are like, what? What? They're like, what, Rob? But well, Think about it. <laughs> I believe you both have some super chats. Uh, oh yes, that are... there's so many super chats. Um, uh, <laughs> people have been very, very, uh, uh, very, uh, very nice. Um, uh, Michael Preston says, "Hey Rob, Elizabeth, I missed you. So if you're back with John Campy, it will Rob's observations continue regularly? Yes, it will. P.S. Discovery still sucks. Love you guys. Happy New Year." Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, I will be going back on the John Campia show four days a week, um, and Rob Observations might be three or four regularly, but yeah, Rob Observations is not going to go away. Whining About Movies is going to come back. Midnight Metal with Urm and Lael and many new guests uh, will still continue because who doesn't want to watch Midnight Metal? Come on. Um, RRT... NZ from New Zealand says, Happy New Year, Bob, Liz, and mm. hey. 2022 has been great so far down here. Look, whenever you can go down under, it's usually pretty good. So I understand. Uh, hope it continues the way it began for all of us. Cheers, folks. Uh, yes. And you know what? Uh, 
We're talking about New Zealand. When I said down under, what did you think? It's New Zealand, you dirty people. <laughs> uh, 200 Watt Studios says Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai Season 4 gives the returning characters the respect that No Way Home did. Good point. I mean, why? Everyone's looking around going, why is Star uh, uh, Spider Man No Way Home so uh, successful? Oh, I don't know, because you brought back, it did something amazing and it did it really well. What do you guys think? Do you guys like Elizabeth? Did you like you? I thought you liked Spider Man No Way Home, right? I did. I really liked it. Why'd you like I'm it? I'm a Spider Man fan. And um, I really love Tom Holland as Spider Man. I think he's fantastic. Um, and uh, I just like that he's a real boy. Um, <laughs> that's what I like about Spider Man. Um, he's just a real boy. Wait, like Pinocchio? Yeah. No, but I know what you mean. He's like he's like as opposed to being a a, a thirty year old dude. Yeah. Yeah. But, he's a boy. And... But so, but let me ask you this. I mean, No Way Home is incredibly successful. How did you feel about bringing back Tobey Maguire and uh, Andrew Garfield as the other Spiderman? Um, I was worried that it would be weird. But it wasn't weird at all, and it worked really, really well. And I love the dynamic between the three. I think it worked really well. I loved the way they interacted with each other and even, you know, working on together against these villains from the past. I just thought it worked really well. Whoever, you know, the writing was great, the dialogue was great, and the acting was great. I, I loved it. Well, I didn't you're not know alone. That I would love it. I mean, people. I was worried. I was like, "What is this going to be?" But yeah. it turned out to be really good. I liked it. Yeah, and like you and I got to go see it. I mean, John, the day yeah. it opened, the first show. Um, were yeah. you surprised? I mean, the the audience reaction was pretty great. Yeah. In the theater, were you surprised uh, that that people were so into it? I mean, I know people are really into these movies, so. Uh, that wasn't really that surprising, um, but I, I I was surprised that I got really into it. Um, I, I mean, I love Spider Man, but you know, I kind of get I kind of get these superhero fatigue. I know, I know. Um, but I'm a fan of Spider Man, so I was looking forward to it. But I didn't know that I would like it as much as I did. Why Why do you think you did like it as much as you did? Um, it just was a really good movie. I think everything worked really well. Uh, I think it was well acted. It was well, um, you know, written. Um, I wasn't bored at any point. Uh, the story moved along well. Um, they really worked in the other two Spider-Men really well. And, uh, yeah, I think that's a yeah. big strength of that movie. And yeah. I, I think they really understood, like, I, I did uh, observations on Friday, or not Friday, the other day, where I read this article, which I found it fascinating. I didn't know this, but both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield had a lot of input into the script, hmm. you know, and, and the idea that... That's cool. Yeah, well, Tobey Maguire, which I find very interesting, said, don't tell anyone what happened after Spider-Man 3, which means, like, okay... They're going to make another Spider-Man movie with you. Good on you. I think it's great. But with Andrew Garfield, he said, look, you know, I'm like the middle brother. And uh, he he said he went down a dark path after the death of Gwen Stacy, which I really liked. I mean, I liked the fact that they incorporated that. I think what was really, what, what's funny, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be puzzling over the success of this film. Well, we, let's just put all these characters, we're going to put every person, every iteration of this character. You can't just do that. That's The, the reason that this movie worked is not because people had nostalgia. Uh, the, the Amazing Spider-Man movies with with, um, with Andrew Garfield were, were not the most well-regarded film uh, movies ever, but he was really... Uh, he acquitted himself with aplomb in this movie. People loved him. They loved his character. Yeah. And, and there's a reason why they wrote his character as the first Spider-Man that showed up in the script. 
You know, when he, when, yeah. and, and I think that, um, is that, you know, I like the amazing Spider-Man, the first one. The second one is I hate, but it, it was interesting that they actually, the fact that all three of those characters, when they said we're like brothers, one of the characters, I think it's, it's Andrew Garfield says, I always wanted brothers, you know, and, and those three Spider-Men become a family. The younger, the middle, and uh, Andrew Garfield's the middle brother, and Tobey Maguire's the older brother, mm-hmm. and and it worked really, really well. And and the fact that they keyed in on that was something. And and I don't think you can't if you put like multiple Kirks, God forbid, if they ever do this <laughs> in in Star Trek movies. I mean, my God, I can only imagine. Uh, tomorrow, 90-year-old William Shatner coming right back from space will come back as William Shatner's... He'll play Captain Kirk again in Alex Kurtzman's latest debacle of horrifying awfulness. But I can see that happening, and they'll never know why it doesn't work as well as Spider-Man No Way Home. Well, I think if they had writers, you know, like Spider-Man did... It could work. I could see something like that happening for Star Trek, but um, you know, well, Alex Kurtzman did because... write a former Spider-Man movie that failed. Right, Just right. Saying. You'd have to, you'd have to like rethink the whole thing and get completely new people to write it, creative people. Um, that uh, I could see that happening. I mean, I mean, I know it won't, but. Um, I think if it was well written, it would be really interesting. Well, I mean, you know, uh, to Underwatch Studio goes on to say, um, you know, Cobra Kai season four gives the characters the respect. The writers give the respect. He says the returning characters respect, and and uh, uh, I, and then he goes on to say, changing the subject, Boba Fett's ship was named the Slave One for a reason. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so weird that in this day and age. That the idea of slavery, which has been around human civilization forever, not just when black Africans were brought to America uh, thousands of years ago, uh, ancient Rome, slavery was de rigueur. You'd conquer a land, you took slaves, um, uh, which happens. And the slave one was named the slave one for a reason, like... I don't find it to be politically incorrect to call it the slave one. <laughs> Boba Fett's a bad guy. There is slavery in the Star Wars universe to suddenly decide, well, oh, wait, so Anakin's mother, uh, Shmi, was not taken as a slave by the Stormtroop or the, the Sand People? No, oh, whatever. Um, Swack Props says, I love Boba Fett so much. I costume as him for the 501st Legion, our friend Greg Smith does too. That said, the character in the Book of Boba Fett didn't feel like the Boba Fett of the original trilogy. Hmm. He's too chatty, and he takes off his helmet way too often. Din Djarin feels more like original trilogy Boba Fett than this Boba Fett. Sad. Well, Swag, I don't think you're wrong. I mean... We know that Mandalorians don't take off their helmets. And he's yeah, always... Yeah, I was surprised by that. Yeah, I mean, he's always taking out... And, and I mean, what's really interesting is... Look, John Fa- it's still John Favreau and Dave Filoni and and uh, Robert Rodriguez. And I, I, I'm always surprised I, I, when I see these things. I'm like, were you guys given mandates by Disney? I mean, Disney... It's really weird that Disney buys Star Wars and Star Wars has a universe with slavery and death and genocide and all this stuff and they want to soft pedal it. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it is weird. Well, I thought it was weird when they bought Marvel and I thought it was weird when they bought Star Wars. That felt strange to me. I mean, I'm a huge Disney fan. But I mean, I was a kid who grew up with Disney. Like I couldn't wait. Every Saturday there was the um, the Disney. Uh, they would show a movie, or they would show some of the uh, animations, and I loved it. I c- I couldn't wait every Saturday to watch that. 
Um, and so Disney was a huge deal for me as a kid and it just didn't, it just doesn't connect for me with the Marvel stuff and with the Star Wars stuff. What do you think? Well, one of the most um, destructive and jarring things we saw, let's say in, in uh, the first, uh, in A New Hope, uh, the first Star Wars film, was the destruction of Alderaan, you know, right. and that's, I, I hadn't really ever seen any science fiction film where a world was destroyed before. That's the first time I ever saw anything like that. And Billions of people died. Yes, they I did. Mean, and, I mean, and, 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 and our characters, I mean, you basically have jackbooted Nazi thugs and Vader is one of them. You know, he stands by while on entire, I mean, I... I I've read other science fiction novels. There's one in particular that I, that I wanted to make into a film my whole life, um, where the destruction of a planet is the worst crime imaginable. In, in in on a galactic scale, if you if you are a planet killing civilization, you are irredeemable. You will be wiped out of the universe. And when Alderaan is blown up, I mean it's horrifying. Isn't it? Yeah, it's terrifying, and it's so it happened. Um, and I'm sure there it probably took some time for the planet to disintegrate. Not that you know this is what happens when you're nerdy and you have to think about how you're answering these questions, but it seems so quick. Um, you know how it was blown up. It was super fast, and you know there just wasn't even time to think about you know anything or do anything. You know it was like a flash in the blink of an eye, and. And, you know, I think that showed, I think that was an, a perfect example of how far the empire will go to get what they want. And, you know, this is what we're expecting to see in a lot of characters. Uh, for example, when, um, one example uh, that that kind of, I'm still a little mystified by is how Moff Gideon um, in The Mandalorian did not hurt Grogu. Now, keep in mind, Grogu is my favorite character. Like, I, if, if they do anything to Grogu, boy. You know, this is there's going to be hell to pay. But um, what I was going to say, Tallulah feels the same way. By the way, she would not <laughs> appreciate anyone hurting Grogu. You know, if look at that dog. When, oh, that's, that's my dog. <laughs> when Moff Gideon um, kidnaps Grogu, you know, I'm surprised that he let Grogu kind of like live. I mean, he says he got what he wanted from Grogu, but why would he let Grogu go or even like pretend that it's okay to kind of let him go? You know, this is, I mean, and it's true, they came and they took Grogu from him. But my point is that I was surprised that Grogu was still alive. And Pershing had kind of hinted, you know, like um, he was just a child and, you know, we couldn't take more from him or it would kill him. And I thought to myself, you know, they just would have killed him. They don't care, you know, like. They Once you have your ge him. his genetic material, like what? why why keep him around? I mean, this is, okay. What you just identified is my problem with, like, you watch shows like Succession or The Mayor of Easttown. The writing in those shows is very tight. It's very thought out. It's very understood. I really feel that a lot of our genre writing um, is not that way. And, and they gloss over things. They feel like, well, we're doing a Star Wars story or a Star Trek story or some kind of a superhero story. This is my uh, my Richard Dreyfus impression. Uh, that uh, so it doesn't have to be written as well as uh, like Mayor of Easttown, and yet, and yet that that thought that is ridiculous because we are are way more interested in the reality of our fantasy than people watching Mayor of Easttown. I mean, it's like we want to believe, man. Make us believe. And if Boba Fett's in the Sarlacc pit, if the first thing you show us is a stormtrooper, we ask, where the fuck did that guy come from? I watched Return of the Jedi. There was no stormtroopers on Jabba's barge. Where's that stormtrooper coming from? And, and, and what they, what's interesting is what they've done in our minds, and John Favreau, shame on you, you wrote the episode. We ask ourselves, I hate to say it, but I'm like, where the fuck did a stormtrooper come from? The last time we saw Jabba the Hutt, he was on Jabba's sail barge and was knocked off 
you know, Han, Chewie, whatever, and flew in ridiculous, turning him into a buffoon, but whatever. Uh, Boba Fett, who was Boba Fett, was so badass in Empire, was turned into a straight up buffoon in Jedi, but okay. So he flies into the Sarlacc pit. You know, well, he doesn't fly, and he falls into it. And there's a stormtrooper there. Like, where's like, there's 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 a couple of people that fell into the Sarlacc pit that we saw in Jedi. So when I'm looking at Boba Fett in the Sarlacc pit with the stormtrooper, my first inclination is to say like. Where did that guy come from? That's not what happened the last time we saw Boba Fett. And I'm like, why did they show this to me? Because they want him to take out what? Uh, 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 so we know that stormtroopers have air intakes in their helmets? <laughs> like, why, why, why did they do that? And this is, I, I feel this is really frustrating for fans. I mean, what, what I find interesting about modern fandom is I really believe that we're not, we don't hate things as we are so much frustrated by them. And we are frustrated by the lack of attention paid by modern writers to the detail of the universe that we, like, we see detail, we see the universe, we're, our cursory glances are a hundred, it's like, we're the James Webb telescope. And the writers now are the Hubble. You know, they're like the writers 35 years ago where their gaze was good. And then we want, we want, we want these writers to be great. And yet they, they're like, somebody writes, there's a stormtrooper inside the Sarlacc pit. When we watch this, we're like, why are you doing this to us? Why are you putting a stormtrooper there? There was no stormtrooper in Jedi. No one was falling into the Sarlacc pit that was wearing a, stor a stormtrooper armor. So why am I seeing it? And and then we're we're we're, we're people are like you guys are crazy. You're no no no. We were told one thing, and you're trying to make us pretend that we didn't see it. And that's why we get pissed. And we ask ourselves, why are the uniforms in Star Trek Discovery completely not in line with what we saw in the original series? Like, well, as an old school Trek fan, I, I want to know, like, how hard can it be? And and yet you're and then you're still telling me that, no, 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 Star Trek Discovery takes place just before Kirk took command of the Enterprise. I'm like, no, it doesn't. No, no, no. You're lying to me. <laughs> You're lying to me. And and I feel like when I watch the book of Boba Fett, I see a stormtrooper in the Sarlacc. I, it's so weird. Like, I'm trying to tell people, most people, like, why do you care? What does it matter? Everyone says, what does it matter, Rob? And I'm like, you know what? It does matter. And, and because it's about our entire society. We have people that believe that earth is flat and that ancient Rome didn't exist. I mean, this, these are real things that are happening on the internet right now. And you know what? If you show me there's a stormtrooper inside the maw of the Sarlacc pit and I didn't see that stormtrooper fall off Jabba's sail barge in 1983, when you show it to me, I'm like, I have disc, I, I, I'm like, bruh, that is non-canonical you have violated canon. And why does it matter? It perhaps doesn't. But you know what? Our entire universe right now is people that are trying to put stormtroopers in the Sarlacc pit. <laughs> That's, it's a metaphor. And our, our society sucks. Listen, John Favreau and, 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 and Robert Rodriguez, there was not a fucking stormtrooper in the Sarlacc pit. Don't show me that there is one, because when you do that, I have I have I have cognitive disassociation, and I'm like, "Fuck you! You're lying to me." So, uh, how can I love your show? How can I love your show? Am I wrong? You, these girls are like, 
this guy's out of his fucking mind. No, what what no. do you guys think? What do you think? Am I, I think wrong? There to are say things this? to love about it because it looks a lot like Star Wars. Like this is, I love that they recreated a world that looks authentic to me. And and I'm sure there's someone out there who's like, well, you know, this is missing, and it's true. It may not be perfect, but um, for the most part, <laughs> I liked it a lot. I like the look of it. So yeah. you know, they've got that down, and you know, that's kind of like ninety percent of it for me. Um, whatever. Boba Fett is actually going through whatever his demons are. I'm I'm assuming we'll find that out very soon, and uh, <laughs> I'm confident they'll they'll approach it. And perhaps someone will. Perhaps that's what the mayor knows about him, or someone there knows. Maybe that's why the mayor didn't give him a tribute because he has something on Boba Fett, and maybe Boba Fett wants to keep it on you know on the down low. I don't know. I mean, I I I just hope that it's something that's salacious and horrifying and shocking and terrifying so bad that Boba has to do everything in his power to either take care of it or suppress it or whatever it is. I know. Well, I, look, I'm with you. I mean, look, I feel sometimes I live in a world as a, as a aging middle-aged white cis male when I'm upset about Star Trek. People are like, Rob, why do you care? Why do you care? What does it matter? And I'm like, it matters because I feel like our entertainment is doing a disservice to the people that are watching it. They're, they're, they're not, our entertainment is, it infantilizes the viewers. And they're not, like it used to be like the, the Twilight Zone, Rod Sterling's Tw Outer Limits, Star Trek. Outer Limits, Twilight Zone, and Star Trek are very erudite, upscale. I mean, yes, they're action adventure shows. I understand, and Twilight Zone is allegorical, but but they always um, they wrote up. They wrote up to their audience. They mm -hmm. expected their audience to rise up to the challenge of those shows, and I feel now that the exact opposite is happening in our pop culture. Not all of it, not like Marvel. I mean, Marvel, they are trying, even, look, I loved Eternals. And I think Eternals, when it comes out on Disney Plus and people actually can sit down and watch it and think, wow, this is pretty ambitious. There's a lot of really interesting stuff in here that is not Civil War. It's not, we're going to have a big superhero battle at the airport. And people will understand, like, okay, this movie is doing something different. But I feel that like a lot of our modern Star Wars, Star Trek are being written down as opposed to being written up. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating that we live in a world where people are not trying to grasp at excellence. Well, speaking of grasping at excellence, what other films did you both enjoy uh, this year that we haven't spoken about? King Richard. We watched King Richard together, babe. Yeah, we did. Um, well, did you like well, I mean, it? Yeah, I mean, we kind of already talked about it, but um, yeah, I, I really liked that film. I thought it was um, very interesting. Um, it was from the perspective of their their father, basically, um, and telling the story of how he got his daughters um, into tennis, into, you know, becoming these huge tennis stars, which I think was a really interesting story. And it was very interesting to see it from that perspective. Um, not telling the story from the perspective of of Venus and um, and Serena, um, yeah. I mean, I loved it. I, it was like it kind of reminded me of um, the Pursuit of Happiness, sort of that kind mm. of vein. Um, which I love stories like that. I think they're great, and both were based on true stories. I think so. Well, you and I. I'm both you and I also both watched my favorite movie of the year, um, Tick Tick Boom. 
And I remember we're both watching this. Like, I don't, it, it was some random, like, we're just putting it on, like, ah, watch this. Lin Manuel Miranda, I, I totally admire him and all that. But uh, I was blown away by that movie. I was blown away by his direction. I was blown away by the story. I was blown away by everything. And I, and Andrew Garfield's performance. And you and I, I, I turned to you, I think, 10 minutes into the movie. I'm like, this is my favorite movie of the year. Yeah. I, I Didn't think I? We both Didn't I do really that? I loved that. Totally, totally. Um, that was a great movie. Um, I know some people don't really like that film, but um, it was really brilliant. I mean, the acting was brilliant. The singing was brilliant. The whole thing, the way it was set up, the way it was put together, I, I think it was a really, really great film. And I think, you know, everybody should watch it. Oh, and it's also about the artistic process. You know, I mean, to me, totally. like one of my favorite in my life, I think the most influential movie I've ever seen in my life is All That Jazz. And it, 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 I mean, it's so weird to say I, I want to be Joe Gideon, the main character for that movie, Joe Bob Fosse, who was a philanderer and a bad father, but he was consumed by his desire to make great art to make great work and uh, and so was so was Andrew Garfield's character and uh it was amazing shit and i i love that i love that movie i w- i was like wow here's an adult film that's not a frit i mean not like boom chicka boom wow adult i mean an adult film that doesn't shy away from the fact that you know you're you're an artist like i i would always tell you i loved sunday in the park with george about I didn't know what a pointillist was. George Surratt, when I found out that was that was a, a Broadway play about a pointillist and and one yeah. picture he painted, you know, and 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 I love that. And I the the act of artistic creation is one of my favorite storytelling tropes, and there's not enough of them. You always remember Surratt because he paints with dots, so that's like the mnemonics yep. to remember uh, that artist. And that picture, I mean, I mean, I, I, you know, the idea of a pointillist, I mean, my God, how, how did he see, you know, when you're, how do you, uh, it, it, incredible, just unbelievable. And, and that's why I love Tick, Tick, Boom so much. And when we well, watch have, it, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was very impressed with uh, Garfield's performance. I thought he was beautiful in this film. Mm. I mean, I believed that it was him who was actually the struggling artist who was incredibly talented is just waiting for that break. Right. And he just was just amazing. And I I kind of fell in love with him. Um, You know, I already liked him already, but I kind of fell in love with him with this performance and he just has so much potential. You know, I could see him doing, you know, 10 films like this because he just, has the ability to captivate you. Um, and and perhaps that's why he was chosen to play Spider-Man as well. But, um, you know, it, it's just amazing to see a performance like that. And um, the music was very, very nice. Oh, my and God. It's so good. Along with it totally. And um, it felt like you were, you know, really, it really felt like you were in the mind of the artist, but also you were watching students who often are doing these sort of things like they're, they're taking classes, but then they're like, I'm going to write this great musical or this great play and I'm going to wow everybody. And, and a lot of times they do have really good work. It's just, it that's just like maybe just scratching the surface is getting to the point of where you have something to present or a pitch to give. And, you know, it doesn't always get to the point where you want it to, but, um, you know, I just was, I thought he was just us. Maybe this was his best performance ever, honestly. Uh, I, I agree. I mean, yeah, it was so, was it brilliant. was so great. And now we do have a lot of super chats. Let me just roll, uh, roll through these. Um, Swack Prop says, I love Boba Fett so much. Oh, I already read that one. Uh, uh, Torn of says, Boba Fett was a human hunter killer from Terminator 1 and Terminator 2. Yeah, I mean, Boba Fett's a bad guy and what they're going to do is they're going to make him the lovable anti-hero and and i think that that i understand again corporate corporate interests are diametrically opposed to great storytelling and look i don't think corporations are bad i don't but the problem with corporations is 
in terms of storytelling, they believe that they have to tell the easiest, most acceptable stories to get uh, everyone to love them. And I would say, you know what? The great movies of the world, uh, uh, Captain Quint in Jaws, if he was like a, oh, he's a lovable guy. If he was, if he was not such a bastard, that movie wouldn't have worked. And, you know, uh, anyway, uh, Tom Jr. Jackson says, why doesn't Elizabeth and R -M not have a show? Oh, great. So the two of you are going to have a show? <laughs> look, man. Look, Tom. Okay. You I'd be goof, fine with it. <laughs> you goof. If Elizabeth totally. and R want to have a show, I have no problem with that. Uh, you know, you know, I, I if, the, if you two want to have a show, uh, I don't. <laughs> Far be it for me to get, uh, I have no problem. I'll put everyone's show on this channel, whatever. That's fine. Uh, Ragnarok Star sends in a tip and says, Matrix 4 was the only movie I've seen twice in theaters this past year. I unabashedly enjoy it. I plan to see No Way Home again soon, though. Glad you liked Matrix 4 too. I feel lucky to have people in my life who loved it even more than me, including my boss and my best friend. Ragnarok Star, let me tell you, I'll tell you this, I'll say this fucking right out. I really enjoyed Matrix Resurrections. Uh, I think I think that, look, there is a contingent of people, and people that I love, I do love them, uh, that I respect, that this movie was, there's no chance they would ever love it. And, and I would say this. I mean, all I wanted... Was Skilly okay? Someone must be oh. Sorry. Okay. No, it's all good. But uh, my my whole thing about... You can go get him. It's fine. My my whole thing is that... I, I, wanted, I wanted a film that was intellectually challenging to me. And I... I found it fascinating. I found it entirely fascinating. And uh, that's all I wanted. Uh-oh. People are coming in. It's okay. People love this. They love to see a little glimpse of our real life together. Come on. It's fine. But I, I love Matrix 4. And uh, do I think it's great? No. I don't think it's great. But I really liked it. And it intrigued me. And I thought it had lots of ideas. And it was really interesting. And... And uh, you know what? It was made by uh, Lana Wachowski, one of the original creators of The Matrix. Mm -hmm. So it, it is it is deserving of all. Of, if you like The Matrix, you Lana Wachowski deserves your respect. You might hate it. I have no problem if you hate The Matrix Resurrections, but don't dismiss the film entirely. Look at it. The original creator was involved, and ask yourself, what about that movie? I found it fascinating. I got out of it what I wanted, which was I wanted a compelling, interesting, weird sci-fi story that 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 talked about where we're at now, and I got that. I thought it was good. I liked it. Uh, Cardinal Sin <coughs> sends in a super chat and says, "There's romance." Between Han Solo and Princess Leia, yeah, there is, but it's it's a yearning romance. We didn't have to see them like bone down in uh, in, in a Hoth ice cave with a Wookiee pelt. But yeah, there is. Um, Two hundred watt studio says just show a Twi'lek leaving Fett's room. Look, I understand you guys. I'm I'm down. Look, apparently. No one fucks in the Star Wars universe, and I think that's problematic. I'm like, there's a lot of hot aliens and people. Like, look, if if I could have a Twi'lek lover and she could stick her things, whatever. I, wait, wait, hang on. I shouldn't say that. I'll get demonetized. It's fine. I'm just saying. I mean, come on, man. There's no sex. Star Wars is the most sexless universe ever, and I think it's detri it's it's to its detriment. Ladies... Don't you think there should be sex in Star Wars? Well, did, weren't Anakin and Padme together? Like, there was definitely something going on between them. I mean, that wasn't sexless. I mean, 
you know, considering the situation, I mean, they had to hide. Yeah, but we it. didn't get to see a Jedi unsheath his lightsaber, yeah. and you know, uh, come on. Well, we don't, we don't ever really get to see. I mean, you you get the sense of like these people are in love. You know, there's some romance going on, but there's never any kind of um, sexual, you know, kind of thing going on. And I think it would be weird at this point to add that in. No, yeah, I think you, if, it, if it had started it out would be as jarring. a franchise you would be like, where... You'd be like, where, where is this coming from? This has never mm -hmm. been presented to us. Like, why is this happening now? Yeah, but then they but then they make the whole idea of virgin births and the midi chlorians and like, yeah. uh, give me give me at least a a a, a neck up love scene <laughs> where where he's kissing Padme's neck or something. I mean, give me something something to it, it, like. I feel I feel look Star Wars and Empire. You're never thinking to yourself, well, uh, where's the scene where these people fuck. But you know what? I mean, once you go beyond that because of the the experiences, you 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 George Lucas specifically made his prequel trilogy about people who fuck. And and there's no sex scene. There's no scene where where uh our ch our our twins are are um created. And I think I think that there should have been. There should have been a scene of eroticism where <laughs> It would have been nice. Yeah, it could have been kind of like, I guess, yeah, it would have been nice to have seen. It didn't have to go too far, but it would have been nice to yeah, see. Yeah, I mean, it, it, but it needed better. to be there. It needed to be there. And 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 what's interesting to me is while, while I mean, I'm sure George Lucas as a, a human being, I have no problem with him, but let's face it, he is not some amazing visionary. The reason Star Wars worked is because he had collaborators who helped him in his stunted ways. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, George Lucas is a goof person. <laughs> would you want to see, um, would either of you want to see this, the, uh, a more sexual tone in Star Trek? Well, I think Star Trek has always been a little bit sexual. I mean, there's. There's always been like like even back one of my favorite moments in the original series is in a eh, not a very good episode called Wink of an Eye, uh, where the Scalosians there there's a moment where Dila, who's a hot actress, there's a moment where you see Kirk and Dila in his quarters and they've clearly spent the night together and Kirk is pulling his boots up. He's putting his, you know, boots on. Yeah, it was and, definitely implied in Star Trek. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I mean, especially Kirk, that that Kirk is super charming and he's very suave and he's like a ladies' man, and so it was always implied. Um, so I, I don't have a problem with it going there in Star Trek. Star Wars is a different story. I mean, it doesn't feel it never was really part of it. So um, I don't have a problem with it not being a part of it. Um, I I don't know. That's just Star Trek that. Discovery has actually said you have Sonequa Martin Green, who is a beautiful woman, and the actor who plays Book, who is also a very handsome man. I I I'm drawing a blank on his name. They've actually said we were together for a year, but we weren't involved. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Are are, are really? And I, I feel like I feel like like we live in an age like the now. The actors or the or the no no the, the characters the, the the characters were together for a year before the discovery showed up. But they so weren't involved. They were these two. But they were on the same ship and all that. These two characters. I mean, um, uh, give me a break. It's the thirty second century. It's David Ajala. Well, why not? Yeah, oh, that's yeah. He's a very handsome dude, and Sonequa Margaret, As much as I hate Discovery. Sonequa Martin Green is a beautiful woman. They and, chose and, not for them not to have a physical relationship for some reason, and I don't know why they it's chose. It's so. That. I mean, first of all, uh, in for, the storyline, th here's the thing, which which I cannot stand. We live in a world where people think sex itself is somehow patriarchal. 
it's bad. It's a, it's a man forcing himself on a woman. So my God, let's not have sex. I mean, what's so weird, uh, what, uh, what, what I don't get about the modern age, and especially in the 32nd century, nobody would give a fuck. And, and, and Star Trek Discovery, God forbid, some, I, I would just say that um, having sex is like shaking hands. It's the 32nd century. And yet yeah. what, what the, the most horrible thing about modern Star Trek is it's set a thousand years in the future, and yet it, it, all it does is virtue signal about today. When you have a character, uh, the fact that there's a, a non-binary character in the 32nd century, like, um, give me a break. Like, as I've said on the show many times, this is my own personal belief, but I really do think that people who are trans are actually trans. They really are. And and one day, we don't have the technology, one day we will be able to prove if someone is it believes they're trans, we will be able to do a brain scan and it'll come out and go, yep, you are. Your brain, when you were in the womb, you had too much estrogen or too much testosterone or whatever, and you truly are a trans human being, meaning that your mind, your brain is in the wrong body. I honestly, I have no, I have no, nothing to support. This. Yeah. I, I think that we're conflating two different things. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, there are people who feel like they are in the wrong body, but that doesn't mean that we are all to become asexual. Uh, you know, even a trans person has sexual feelings of course. Being asexual is a separate thing. Uh, there are many people who feel asexual and they don't feel any kind of, you know, need to uh, feel physical, uh, you know, um, <laughs> attraction or, or, or anything physical, you know, but and that's fine. But it feels like, like we're trying to erase any kind of sexual um feelings or content because we're so confused about about all these different things that are happening but they're they're separate and different things and i feel like we're we're missing out plus like everyone is desensitized with access to so much pornography it's like kids don't even care about sex anymore because they've seen so much of it and it's just like been you know they've been desensitized they don't even care they don't even want to have sex with anyone because it's just not interesting to them anymore because they've seen so much of it um and they can't it, live up really to what sad. they've seen yeah yeah they can they can't possibly well i um, think that's why uh benedetta was such a hit this year and maybe even mm -hmm. titan which won the palm door um because it explored sexuality in a different way and it you know n neither of them had anything to do with pornography necessarily both of them had to do with sexual desires and things that were natural and yes, it's true. Okay, lesbian nuns, I get it. I know that it's kind of a, a novelty idea, but you know, we we should always, at least I think people should start to kind of think as other people as human beings. I mean, you know, these are nuns, they're human beings. They have feelings and desires too. And, you know, in, in Titan, we have a character who is very misguided and does some very wrong things. But even this character has, has sexual desire to to make a connection. Um, I was speaking to Tom Jr. Jackson about this a few seconds ago, who reminded me that Wheel of Time, which I think both of you were watching, yeah. uh, very very uh, meticulously placed romance and and you know pseudo sex scenes. They're not you know incredibly exposing sex scenes, but there certainly was some very nicely placed, lovely placed. Uh, romantic situations and scenes that, you know, implied, you know, that these couples were getting together. And I liked it. And I also liked the idea that some of the characters are bonded and they even made a point of saying that there's like this bond that's stronger than, uh, you know, they tried to make a comparison to try to explain what this bond between the water and the Aes Sedai is. And I really like that. I think that that's that's something that is exploring another way of connecting with someone, and and it felt very, it felt very, um, it felt uh, very intimate that connection. 
you know, another type of intimate connection, perhaps we can't understand because, you know, we don't live in their world. But, you know, what a wonderful thing to kind of do to kind of introduce a way of commu of connecting with someone that you're bonded to them. And that connection we saw in one of the episodes where the, the guy who's the warder just couldn't live without the Aes Sedai who had been uh, killed and he actually kills himself or, or something like mm -hmm. that. And it was quite traumatic, quite a thing. But um, this connection, I mean, I think that desire for that, uh, for a connection with someone, whether it is a sexual connection or not, that intimacy, we're also not necessarily seeing in a lot of films, but to see it in the Wheel of Time, I thought was just really very, um, a more mature take on what it is to have relationships as an adult in, I guess, in that world, but perhaps even our own. I mean, what did you both think about some of the, this, the relationships that you saw in the Wheel of Time? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love that. Oh, sorry, Tulu is freaking out. Um, I love that, that that kind of thing is included in that. Um, I, I feel because it's a fantasy and it's set in a certain time frame, uh, I still feel like, um, uh, you know, it's not. I think we've, we've fallen away from the idea of romance and the idea of, you know, it's like, ew, romance is so gross nowadays. Like, you can't even, like, say nice things to someone, you know. It's like, why are you saying that to me? You're being a pervert. It's like, well, you know, we're, we're missing out on this whole um, element of, of human interaction, um, you know, that, that it's really a beautiful thing. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like uh, we're missing out on... on, on something beautiful like we're just throwing it away well i you know the, there's one there's one scene in in the show i think it's like uh, maybe episode four where one of the custodians what are they called um the water the water comes in and gets into the bath you know yes. and and he's got a great ass and whatever you're like oh boom chicka boom yeah, that, wow. that guy is that guy is he's really hot. Yeah, he's hot he's as fuck. So I mean, you, look, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> so reasonably beautiful. straight guy, but I'm like, I get it. I mean, I understand. I mean, the the idea of, of human interaction, it's so weird to me. I, I, I'm i like, gender specific. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. People are hot. It's okay. I can say it. I have no problem. He's a hot guy, but what was really interesting about that scene is he gets into the bath with the woman he's protecting and and... It doesn't become a sex scene, but they play it like it's going to become one. And the idea is, no, it's it it's not intimate. Yeah, it, but yeah, that's the, that there's was definitely an intimate connection between. The, that the two. was exactly right. I mean, they they subvert us, the audience, our expectations. Like, bum chick, bum, bum, but no, that's not going to happen. A guy walks in, sits down with a woman, and they they have a conversation about politics and what's going on. And and I loved I loved that because it's like look, it's easy. Look from a storytelling standpoint, as someone who's actually directed softcore porn for HBO, I can say that, um, what happens when you do that is the plot stops. And 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 for the show when I was working on Femme Fatales. The sex scenes were part of the reason for the show, but what was it was difficult for us as writer and directors or editors. We hated doing the sex scenes because they didn't advance the plot. And you're asked to like, well, you have to show one minute and thirty eight seconds of somebody touching a bare boob. That was true. That we had to do that, and it's like, um. Uh, yeah, but there's a difference between like just like th these sex scenes that you had to do for that show and um, Wheel of Time where it's actual and it's actual in the context of a relationship. Um, yeah, they're they're bonded like he is he is bonded to her in a way to protect her. And so that relationship becomes very deep. And, uh, but but the funny thing is those two characters end up having relationships with other people. Um, even though they are bonded. Um, so it, it's like this very, very intricate kind of thing um, where it's, it's multiple relationships, but it's not a sexual, I mean, it is sexual, but 
that's not the point of it. It's about these relationships. No, but also it, it's mature. It shows that people can have multiple kinds. It's not like mm-hmm. everybody who gets into a hot tub together nude is going to start fucking like rabbits. I mean, the show shows Wheel of Time shows that there's a maturity and there's a there there is a maturity and a um adult aspect to their lives where and yet we're we're still like he he will they or will they not do it uh, and the fact is in a european way lots of people can get into the baths with one another and uh, soak yes and not want to be like, well, uh, my dick's hard, and, and I need to fuck you. No, that I mean, people in Europe are thousands of years more advanced than we are. Americans are. I joke about that, but we're, you know, we we we're, we're just not very mature. We're the adolescents on the world stage. Well, we're we're supposed to be getting a new film. Let's say this Cleopatra film that's coming up, and I don't know who's doing the writing. I, from what I've heard, uh, the director was just removed. But we've had a number of different renditions of Cleopatra. Everybody on Earth knows who Cleopatra is or was. Let's say, um, are we going to get a mature version of this film, or is it going to be a family friendly version? Because we have plenty of family friendly versions of Cleopatra. But she was such a dynamic person and obviously a sexual person with her. She was a you know, very sexual person. She was considered the most beautiful woman in the world. Um, I, it would be disappointing to uh, make it family friendly. I mean, I want to see that side of her. I want to see, you know, uh, she was gorgeous and people and men wanted to be with her. Well, yeah, I mean. I think we live in a, a very strange world where sexual relations themselves are considered part of the patriarchy, which is bizarre to me. Um, I, I uh, fucking is awesome, and uh, it's create. You, you have to be in your mind creative. I mean, it, it's just a mechanical act, but we give it so much juzhuz with our imagination. Um, the idea that we we are trying to create, uh, on one hand, you, like you have Billie Eilish a couple weeks ago came out and said, when I was 11, I was watching hardcore pornography. That's fucked up. But that's the world yeah, we live I think, in. I think that is the world we live in. And I think that happens way more often than we think. No, it happens I mean, to everyone. Kids have access, they have access to everything. And it really does change your brain. I mean, um, like she was saying, like you keep seeking out uh, more and more um, uh, deeper, uh, um, more strange kind of um, sexual acts to stimulate that part of your brain because you just become desensitized to just like the the normal kind of sexual act that you need to like go deeper and into these really like uh, darker kinds of acts that you know, just to even be stimulated. Well, um, and it, and it changes your brain. And I listened to a story on NPR um, talking about what Billie Eilish was saying. And it was a, a, a psychologist that was, you know, confirming that it can definitely change your brain when you're exposed to it at such a, a young age. Well, what I find, I mean, what I find strange about, like sex in general, is that when you're watching pornography that is not like POV pornography, it's shot by somebody in the room. And you're, you're, the fact is when you're actually engaged in a sex act, you'll never see it from the third person, the God's eye perspective. And yet we are a lot of porn because we're watching porn from that there's call it the cameraman's perspective. We're seeing something that we as people will never be engaged in because when you're actually involved in that act, you're not seeing it from a third person perspective. You're, you're actually, you have to do things. You have to actually, there's, there's, there's physicality 
And 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 the funny thing about it is pornography doesn't deal with the fact that okay, so um you know, like if if you're caressing a breast, for instance, every woman is different. You know, and 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 let's say you pinch her nipples. How much force do you use? Does she even like that? Maybe she wants you to suck on her nipple as you run your tongue counterclockwise around her areola. Who knows? But the fact is, when you're watching porn, none of that comes into play. Mm-hmm. You're watching a tableau that that is a movie. It is a fictitious thing. And and so when you think about if you're watching pornography at 11, which you you've never had sex in your life, you're watching it from that third person perspective. You're watching it from the Hollywood movie point of view. And and the whole thing about sexuality or whatever is to be next to another person, to caress their body, to it has no bearing on what the pornography you've watched even though it's the same act it's the same thing but when you're involved in it it's so far removed from the camera angle you've been jerking off to since you were 11 and what it, it removes you from from the actual uh, the creation in your mind of fantasizing about it yep. and and in yearning for it you don't yearn for it anymore because you're like you're 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 exposed to it all the time and and you and know since you were um, 11 when when we were young like just sneaking around to make out with your boyfriend was like super exciting because you didn't want to get caught by your parents like but that doesn't happen anymore like these kids don't sneak around anymore they they're just so exposed to everything and and nobody even says anything like they don't even desire it anymore so they're not even sneaking around there's not like no because they that can watch it online of, like, of like making out in a car, you know, in your driveway and yeah. scared that your dad's going to see you from the window, you know, yeah. like that's thrilling, yeah. you know, and they just don't even experience that anymore. But it, it's like, it's like, I, I mean, it seems so pedestrian, but it's like kids, like on my 16th birthday, I got my driver's license. I, I when I turned 16, the day I turned 16, I was driving my Ford LTD station wagon with the the faux wood paneling. And what did I do? I took like eight of my friends driving out to the movie theater went and saw a movie. I don't even know what it was. But the idea, when I was 16, I had my goddamn driver's license. And we were free. Kids today, they don't give a fuck about driver's license. That, like... Like the idea that they don't even like, why would you care? Who cares? I can just Uber. I mean, and, and, and I, I will, I, I don't want to be like, well, when I was young, those whippersnappers, <laughs> I'm not going to be that. The point that I'm trying to make is not that I'm old and things are different now. The point that I'm trying to make is the idea of freedom. The idea of, of nowadays, uh, because of social media and our technology, um, you don't have to learn to drive. You can Uber. But mm-hmm. but in learning to drive, that was a skill that you had to hone. That was something that you owned. And when you when you are when you can no longer like I don't give a fuck, but if it, wh- whoever does whatever. But in our post apocalyptic landscape, when the meteor hits or don't look up, whatever or society falls uh if you were a kid that ubered everywhere and you are faced with being in the mad max post-apocalyptic world and someone says kid get in there and drive that fucking car if you don't know how to do it that's fucked up man and at the end of the day driving requires a a a specific skill set and it requires, especially when you go on the highway, your perception, your ability to perceive the world around you changes. And I think you're a better person if you know how to drive than if you don't. And this is not me being like, oh, I'm the old, uh, I'm old, fuck patriarchy. Blah. No, 
learning how to drive, even going to a gas station and learning how to navigate a gas pump and going in and talking to people or understanding when the gas pumps are full and you have to wait. There is, there is lessons to be learned driving that you won't learn if you can't drive. And I would say those lessons can't be taught. You just have to experience them for yourself. And I feel that our, our society, our, our youth especially, they're not, they're not getting the basic, the, the, the basic, like, like when you walk into a, a room and just be like, how do you address someone? Like, hey man, how's it going? And I feel like our society is losing the ability to walk into a room and be like, hey, what's up? And it's weird, man. It's weird. I, I mean, my God, I, I'm talking about like dudes meeting girls. Mm -hmm. I used to think that, and correct me if I'm wrong, the most important thing a guy can do the first time he meets a girl is to have a twinkle in his eye and say something, anything, even if it's mundane, but to look at the girl you're talking to and just give her a twinkle. And I, I, I say twinkle not in a, like, I'd say it in a metaphorical way. Like, you have to walk up to a girl and say something to her that makes her want to have a conversation with you. I don't know what that is. It's all, it's up to you to decide. But well, you, you know, you, go ahead. Being I, in um, isolation for the past two years or so has not helped the situation. Um, I think that it's, uh, it's unfortunate that we all are in this situation, but in regards to connecting with others, it has made it diff difficult to make an, a more intimate con a connection. And I think that we're going to have to kind of, not that we completely forget, but some of these things, these social graces, we almost have to relearn them. And, you know, it's it's part of why I wanted to go to the cons this year is just because I, I needed to get out and see people, you know, who had similar interests sure. to me. I felt like that was important. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did that. But I do also realize that we missed out on a lot of that. You know, while we're very lucky to have this medium that we have right now, we'd probably be in even worse trouble if we didn't. Um, it, it isn't quite the same. And um, I did also want to ask uh, you both whether or not you'd seen a series called The Queen's Gambit and what you thought about it. Oh, my God. Yeah, um, we loved that show. Um, yeah. What do you want to say about it, Rob? Look, I mean, OK, first of all, The Queen's Gambit was based on a book written by Walter Tevis. And uh, he wrote The Hustler and The Color of Money that uh, uh, Paul Newman was in both of those films. And by the way, talk about a, uh, talk about a movie. Uh, people forget Martin Scorsese's real comeback was after the King of Comedy was uh, The Color of Money, which was based on Walter Tevis's novel. Uh, Walter Tevis wrote The Queen's Gambit, I think, in 83. I'm a huge, huge fan of him. He also wrote the book, The Man Who Fell to Earth, that Nicholas Rogue directed that David Bowie was in. So um, uh, Walter Tevis is a guy who wrote books that people wanted to make into movies, but he didn't write very many. The Queen's Gambit was fucking incredible. And, and what I loved about The Queen's Gambit so much is that Scott Frank, who directed it, wrote and directed it. I mean, the Queen's Gambit is an autourist <laughs> vision, and it's 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 amazing. It's an amazing show. It's really really great. And and Scott Frank, who did that, he had done another series, a seven episode series, for Netflix called Godless, which mm -hmm. is based on a true story. Um, uh, godless, uh, w w w uh, all the men of a western town were killed in a mining disaster, leaving the women to fend for themselves when uh, other male predators came in. And it was, I mean, I fucking love 
Long story short. That was a great mm-hmm. show, too. Oh, it was so good. I mean, and and here's the thing. As much as I love movies, I thought my whole life, I thought, oh, my God, I want to make movies. And, and I've done, you know, I've, I, <laughs> I've produced things and made things and cut things. But I've never been able to work on or make something that I originated from the ground up. That's my goal in life. And maybe it might be one movie or whatever. Maybe the, the first film I directed was kind of that way. But but that's my goal. I would love to come up. That said, Scott Frank, who directed Godless and directed and wrote... Green's Gambit, uh, probably my favorite early on in 2021, but my mm-hmm. favorite piece of entertainment. It is brilliant. It is beautifully made. It is so well directed, so well written. Scott Frank, kudos to you, sir. And if indeed you are going to really, your next adaptation is the science fiction novel, The Sparrow, my God, sir. Let me bow down and kiss your feet because God bless. I mean, if you do that, amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. And that's my favorite thing of 2021 was the Queen's Gambit. It's so good. So Elizabeth, good. what are your thoughts about, what did you think about the, the series? Um, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I love those kind of stories. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't have COVID. This is allergy related. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was great. I thought the acting was really good. The story was great. The pacing. Um, yeah, I loved the whole thing. I really enjoyed um, watching it. I think we binged it, right, Rob? Yeah, no, we did. And, and you know, you were very enamored of the design. And, uh, yeah, totally. The, uh, I mean, as someone who's an artist, I mean, you love the work that was shown uh yeah, all, yeah. And, and, all, it was it, uh, exquisite, beautifully done. What well, you know, and and it's I loved it. Um, and I I wanted the story to be true. Like I was very disappointed to find out. I that know, it was, right? Like, <laughs> true story. And I'm like, you mean right. to tell me there isn't this grandmaster, this young grandmaster uh, girl who? And it's okay. But any story that that inspires that type of feeling or sentiment is is certainly uh spectacular and anna taylor joy you know this for me this is her, her breakout series um i think perhaps more people saw the queen's gambit than some of her other films prior mm-hmm. to this point i mean she's a splendid actress um but i think a lot of people saw this more you know because there was access to it via streaming yeah. And I also wanted to mention that Anna Taylor Joy was in another film that I liked very, very much called Last Night in Soho, which is directed by Edgar Wright. And it just was uh, an incredible film. He played an incredible role. I wasn't quite sure if either of you had seen um, Last Night in Soho this year. Um, We haven't, but I will say this. I was just looking... The lovely Emma Bannon, who is a, a foundational member of the Post Geek Singularity, sent me an amazing poster for One Night and So, it, which looks like a painted 60s <coughs> poster right out. I mean, clearly um, amazing. It, it, amazing. I can't wait to see it. I'm a huge Edgar Wright fan. I can't wait to see the film. But we haven't seen it yet, but we will. Well, I've seen it and I loved it. And I did a review with um, Catherine Cook uh, for the film. And I couldn't say enough about it. There were so many elements that I loved. Um, Edgar Wright uh, has done a a few videos talking about how the film was made and, and, you know, uh, anatomy of a scene style stuff. Mm. Um, But there's one scene in particular that I just loved. It's at the end of the film. I'm not going to say what happens, but it was the it was the the organization of the scene that I loved because there were certain parts of the scene where, um, you know, one person is pursuing another and one of the person seems like they're in a trance. And I really liked that. I felt like that was such an interesting approach. You know, when you're looking at a thriller 
where, you know, a lot of times there's a there's a good person or a bad person. And in this one, you know, part of the time you're kind of like on the fence about, you know, who may or may not have been at fault. And right. I took my mom to see the film and she figured out the film in, in like the first 30 minutes. Like she knew what was going to happen. And I just was like, I can't believe this lady. Like it was just so funny that she guessed it and she she was spot on about it. She was like, this is what's happening. And I'm like, yes, totally. that's what's happening, mom. I'm, I was like, I hope you didn't say that too loud. It's like other people in the in the theater would hear what she said and she would spoil the film for everybody. But um, it's definitely worth watching and it's fun. You know, I like films where they mix time periods and this is what they did in that film. So I think um, it was definitely a winner and, and just pure entertainment um, for me. Look, so. I, I'm a huge fan. I can't wait to see the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm, you and yeah. I... And Leia are going to stream late. Well, actually, tomorrow, not today. Mm -hmm. So yes. I, I, I'm going to bring some. I think I'm going to bring Tom Junior Jackson on. Okay. Well, but it's such I, a pleasure streaming with both of you. I've had a wonderful time, and I look forward to doing it again. Well, I just want to say, yeah, I mean, uh, on a New Year's, I mean, Elizabeth doesn't watch Midnight Metal. She doesn't know. And I, I want to say, uh. Mm, uh streaming with you meeting you uh becoming friends with you has been one of my highlights of this year and i am a and even meeting your mother was delightful uh i want to say that um you're an extraordinary human being and i want to thank you for the support you gave tango shalom and uh everything you've done uh and i i hope that everyone subscribe where can people subscribe to you Oh, yes. I have a channel uh, on YouTube. It's called Positive Fandom. You can subscribe to me there. I also stream on Twitch. It's one word, Positive Fandom. And you can find me on there. You can always find me on the Burnett work. Um, but you can also find me on uh, on Toxic Femininity on Monday nights at 8 o'clock. Not this Monday, but it's going to start up after this Monday uh, with Lorena Creole. And you can find me on Uncivilized Scoundrels on Thursday nights on the Six Scale Man Network. And you can also find me on Fridays on Midnight's Edge in the morning at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, thank you so much. And uh, your friendship and uh, your co contributions to this channel are immeasurable. And I want to thank you for everything we've, well, we've done this year. Uh, let's do some more great shit next year. Well, we're already in next year. But uh, thank you so very much for everything you've done. You're welcome, Robert. And thank you for have, for both of you having me here tonight. I've enjoyed every minute of it. And, and, and enjoy this wonderful new year. It's a new year. And uh, things are just going to get better. And uh, such a pleasure spending this uh, New Year's Day with uh, both of you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank I will, you. We will see you later. And Bye. now I'm going to go. I'm going to go sp uh, to Elizabeth, Wendell, and Bell, and Tallulah. Look, I mean, look at this tableau. <laughs> My God, can you see more beautiful creatures in your life? I don't think you can. <laughs> I mean, the beauty of Elizabeth and the beauty of Tallulah. I, I, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I well, actually, I'm not so shocked because I see them every day. But <laughs> you know what? It, it, sometimes you have to be apart from them to understand how beautiful they are. Aww, and uh, that's so sweet. Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell, such a beauty. My God, look at you—a classical beauty, transcending time. Come on now. Thank look you, Rob. You. Well, don't talk look to at me this. like I'm. Well, look at well, this. Well, okay. I mean, if you don't want to talk about how beautiful you are, that's fine. Tallulah, look, I, I look at. Oh my God, look I at know, that! Look at, I look at look that. At. I uh, like. I know. I know. And Tallulah doesn't even know that. If she knew that I was talking to you, she'd be like, "Oh my God." <laughs> she has no idea. Yeah, but look, she would. look at like that. It. Look at that Isn't beautiful she dog. Look, she Aww. is so cute. So, oh my God. I, oh, Elizabeth, I know you're at this point. It's two twenty in the morning. You 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 want to be in bed, but 
My God. Yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> I understand, but can you can you look? I want to find Tom Junior Jackson. Bring him on. Look, but but I can't. I can't. I cannot. The the cuteness. The two of you. The cuteness is beyond comprehension. <laughs> My God. Um, hang on. I think. I think it's time. I mean, I can if, if I can find him. We still have super chats, and we're. I mean. I'll let you go. I'll let the two of you go. I understand. But uh You let think... me go? Well Is no, I mean saying? I'll let you go tonight. I understand the fact that you're up at two hundred two hour two you're you're up at two twenty one. The last time you did that was like in like nineteen ninety eight. <laughs> it's unbelievable you're up this late. And even even Tallulah's like It is. Tallulah's like so spaced out, she's like uh, it's funny because I'm really not a morning person, but I'm really not a night person either. And my ex-husband used to say that I'm a middle of the day kind of person. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, I, all I know is that if I don't make you coffee in the morning, you get or, ornery. Ornery. Oh, I don't know what to oh, say. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. What, what come are you on, saying? Man. Come on, dude. Like what? Come on. Okay, well, okay, I'm looking, I'm looking at, uh, hang on, maybe I have to go, in, like, I'm, I'm going to send Tom Jr. Jackson, he might not, uh, he's, on, he's on the East Coast, it's like 5.30, like, uh, maybe he's not, okay, so Tom, I'm going to send you a link right now in the messages, uh, he wants to come on the show, uh, here you go, Tom, uh, he, he might be asleep, I don't know, uh, but Tom, Please use Google Chrome. Here, here is the link. And if, if Tom Jr. Jackson comes on, uh, that would be great. Hang on, uh, we'll see. I'm gonna disconnect. Hang on, uh, cancel. Hopefully, uh, Tom will uh, come on. He he might be he might be uh, getting. Hang on one second. He sent me a message. He's gonna say, uh, "Hang on, Tom." Uh, don't see the link. I just want to come on. I did send you. I did send you the link, Tom. Don't see a link. I just sent it to you on uh, Twitter. All right. So, come on, Elizabeth. You you know. Oh, Tom you know Junior Jackson. Let's. We're gonna add him. We're gonna add him to the show. Yep. Okay. Uh, hold on. Wait. Where is he? Uh, what? 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 There he is. Tom is here. So, Tom, I'm going to bring you into the show. Are you ready? Are you ready? I mean, you're one of, uh, hang on. I mean, Tom Jr. Jackson, one of the, one of the great men of the post-geek singularity. Pardon me, should I say men or just say people? I mean, my God. I'm going to add. people. Uh, uh, so, okay, let me just say, it is my honor uh, I have to I have to say that for anyone who is a member of the Post Geek Singularity, it is my honor to add uh, a man who has changed the face of this channel, who 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 coined a phrase that um, uh, you cannot escape from, and uh, I know he didn't mean to do it, but my God, he did do it. Please welcome. Uh, in the show, I, I'm sorry, Tallulah, you're out, you're out, you're out of the family. No, not really. Please welcome Tom Jr. Jackson to the, well, it's, it's not Midnight Metal, it's the, uh, it, it's the, it's Elizaviews whining about movies, the first Elizaviews in six months. Tom, yeah, welcome. Hi. Hello. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Tom. How are you? You guys have never Good. streamed together. No, no we but have we're not. friends on Facebook. Yes, we are. And someone is not friends with me on Facebook. And I'll give you three guesses. First two don't count. Tallulah. Rob, <laughs> you, buddy. I'm not friends with you on what? Facebook? That's nope. crazy. And I sent um, you a request. Oh, my God. Is that... That's... Dude... I, I, really? Hang on. It's the new year. I'll let it slide. 
Oh my god. So so let let's let's uh trying to figure out can you slide over a little bit? There you go. Yeah, there you go. So uh let me ask you something. You are one of the most um I would I would I would if there if there's one member of the post geek singularity that I would point to as the foundational uh, a person that makes this channel what it is. I would point to you. I would say Tom Jr. Jackson is that guy. I would ask you, I mean, you know, why this community? What is it about, I mean, I, and by the way, I'm not asking you to both smoke up my ass. I'm asking you, what, uh, what I love about this community is people have made other communities. They've found each other and gone off and done their own shit, which is right. amazing. Why this community? What is it about the post-geek singularity? It's not me. I'm talking about the people like everyone else. What is it about that community? Why be a part of it? Um, I, I feel that it's a community full of like-minded people. Everybody has their own opinions, but they're a lot of discussions on movies and um, if someone has a problem, everybody has each other's back, which I love. It's a very, uh, in, uh, this is what I'm looking for, a very cooperative, very uh, smart community. And uh, hold on here. You about to tell me to say? No, no hang on. Hang on one second. Hang on. One, I, I think it's time. Like, I cannot believe the lovely, beautiful Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell as, as, has come on for two hours and we're, we're two hours and 27 <laughs> minutes into 2022. If you live on the Pacific Coast, I think Elizabeth is, is, is she's been saying to me virtually, like, give me the fuck. I got to get the fuck out. I got to go <laughs> to bed. I said that. I, I you didn't say that, but I'm, I'm, I mean. She goes. This guy's putting me to sleep. Uh, look at no. Look at Tallulah. No, 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 no. Look at Tallulah. I mean, it's I, I want to. Way past my bedtime. Baby, baby, I want to say, you were so delightful. Thank you so much. You're so beautiful and so funny and effervescent. It was so good to have you here. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to let you go, but I'm going to continue on with this episode. Okay. And, cool. Uh, uh, and look at look at Tallulah. She just she's like. Why aren't we sleeping? Why are we talking? What's going on? Yeah, she's very needy right now. Yeah, well, so babe, I will see you when we're done with this stream. Okay. Uh, I will let you go, but I am going to bring on Tom Jr. Jackson in your in your stead, if that's okay with you. That's great. Happy New Year, Elizabeth. Happy New Year, Tom. Good to see you. Um, to please see you. say goodbye to everyone in the stream. Uh, yes, thank you goodbye, all for being everyone. here. Whining about Happy movies is going to come back, right? Don't leave just because I'm leaving. I, um, I'm i tired. It's okay. You, you can be tired. All right. <laughs> Good uh, night. Babe. Well, Happy I, I, New Year. I, Happy New Year. Do, do you, do you have here. any wisdom to give to the folks at home? Do you want, what do you think the new year will be? Does it matter? Um, I, I would just say be kind. Um, I think that's most important. Just be kind. Uh, would you tell people to be kind and also rewind? Oh, wait. No one knows what that means. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Um, you're the only one who still has that technology. No, I so, don't even have um, that. What, oh, come on now. Anyway. All right, babe. Bye, everyone. All right. Happy New Year. Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell uh, taps out. So great to have you here, babe. And uh, a great New Year's Eve. Yeah? Bye. Yeah, well, okay. There she goes. There she goes down, walking down the street. I don't even know. Do a diddy diddy dum. So, Tom. Tom Jr. Yo. Jackson, my God, now we can really we can drink some real alcohol. Hang on, I don't. No, I'm just kidding. So, Tom, how you doing? Yeah. 
How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing yeah. awesome. It's it's New Year's Eve, and I got the. I think I would. I can say all day. It, it's it's been. I've been watching the different uh, time zones go. Oh, and 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 do you have? I mean, going into twenty. The real question is, going into twenty twenty two, are you optimistic about the human race or what? Yes and no. Mm. Yes, that there are certain people in the human race that are doing well, and then no, because there are those who just don't want. They they have their own feelings of how things should go, and they don't want to cooperate with things. But I don't want to make this a political thing because then it'll be really bad in the chat. <laughs> but um, well, I, I I do think I do think that we. If, if we can get it cleared up, I think we can learn how to, we're just learning how to deal with, uh, we were learning how to deal with COVID. Now we're learning how to deal with this mutation of it. It's going to take some time. So we mm. all have to come together and do our part. Um, it's, it's a difficult thing. And I understand that it's, I mean, no one wants to be in a situation. No one, no one asks for this. This is where we're at, but I mean, as long as we can all come together and, you know, if we have to talk on mediums like this and discuss things like movies or whatever we want, then we'll be fine. Yes, it's not the human interaction we want, but it's the best thing you're going to get without, you know, catching anything. I mean, I would have came on with my mask, but I couldn't find it. Well, okay. I mean, that's fair. Now, let me ask you ask you this mm -hmm. obviously that uh 2021 was a time where we were all locked down we watch a lot of entertainment mm -hmm. and to keep it on point what are some of the great pieces of entertainment you've seen whether it's on disc whether it's on streaming or whether it's you know in the theater what 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 have you loved in 2021 what did you love I loved, I loved the I loved the Eternals. I actually loved that movie. I thought I did was, too. I thought it was so different. But then again, I'm loving Phase Four because they're actually going into the different genres of different types of uh, movies. Like you got Shang Chi, which was martial arts. You have uh, Eternals, which was kind of like a bit of world aspect to it but historic in a way and then you have spider-man no way home where it's about again family it's about uh becoming independent in some ways but trusting people and and don't say oh i've got this i can fix this and not ask for help you know what i mean mm. um i enjoyed watching the beatles documentary I, I loved it. I, I've watched it like four times now. Amazing, like, right? I mean, incredible. Amazing. I mean, so you sit there and you see, you know, uh, Paul McCartney is told, like, you got like two weeks to finish up 14 songs, right, record 14 songs. And he's sitting there and he's playing with his bass. And you see him working out, get back. And George and Ringo are there just watching him. And you see them trying to pick up the chords. And then Ringo's starting to do the the claps for it, and then you see them progressively, Paul playing the bass, George is on guitar, Ringo's on drums, John comes in and just picks up, not even knowing what chords they're doing, and just figures out what they're doing. Yep. And you see the birth of this song, and I thought that was so amazing. The, the only thing I didn't like about that documentary was they would, like, okay, you can go to uh, somewhere uh, big, you know, like go to like Egypt or Arabia or something like that. Sure. And they're like, no, no, no. We want to do something small, like a little theater of 10 people. And they all wanted them to do something big. And they're like, we're not comfortable with that. We're not to the power where we can do that. We want to start off small. So it was like they were being pushed to do something they don't want. And I felt really bad about that. You know, it's like, come on. These are the Beatles. Give them a break. So I, I liked I, I liked it, and that's the only thing I didn't like about it. 
Um, I liked that uh, the new Marvel book that they came out, that two volume set. Yep. And it's beautiful, and it starts out with Blade and the original Spider Man trilogy. And then you come to find out while they were doing, like, making Guardians and all that, they were trying to come up with uh, doing Blade, uh, another Blade movie, which wasn't like the original three movies and the TV series, but also they were trying to work on Moon Knight as well, as far back as uh, 2010. Dude, um, uh, saying Moon Knight to me is like asking me about my first kiss. I love Moon Knight so much. I'm a huge Moon Knight fan. Has, has the date been released yet for that? Uh, I, you know, I just, I don't know. By the way, do you know, uh, we have another guest. All right. Bring him on. Well, I would love to bring him on, but I can't because uh, his camera's not on. And um, what can I do? What? Can, but I'm going to bring him on anyway because he's one of my, he, he, you know what? He, he's one of my favorite. Uh, we can hear us, uh, uh, maybe. I have to say, our next guest is perhaps, you know, I don't want to play favorites, but one of my most favorite people that I've met over the past year uh, in the post-geek singularity uh, community. And, again, I don't, I don't say this like I'm not like, playing favorites or anything like that but when I I'm not comparing or contrasting I'm just saying a man that I respect a man that I really love his point of view and um just just a human being that I enjoy and um I am going to bring him on and if you don't know him and you haven't met him um I'm gonna bring him on anyway because I don't you know give a fuck and you should, because he's fucking rad. Can I say rad? I mean, uh, yeah. uh, uh, I, you know, uh, can I say rad? Tom, can I say rad? Yeah. And, and, and bring it back, Rob. Bring it back. What? Nope. You, you, oh, wait. You sound fantastic. I mean, my God. Uh, just hang on. You sound amazing. So for those of you who don't know him, Mikey Lido, let me just bring him on. Welcome to this crazy hybrid 130th episode of Whining About Movies. Mikey Lido, welcome. Why, well, thank you, Rob. Hello, Tom. And hey, uh, Happy New Year to everybody in the post geek singularity. I didn't expect to get on because I, I waited like a few minutes before I. Uh, clicked in thinking other people would be waiting and you caught me unprepared but. dude well okay son now let me ask you this you and i uh, uh are pretty much uh we see eye to eye in terms of our what we like sometimes and then we're diametrically opposed but i think you and i both love tick tick boom Got that right. <laughs> I love that. I, it's my favorite movie of the year, and uh, it's funny when people tell me they don't love it. I'm like, you're dumb. I don't want to. You know, everyone's got their own opinion, but I've I gone, do. I've gone on, I've gone on Pauly streams a couple of times and going like, you haven't watched Tick Tick Boom yet. Like, I know, right? So l I want to ask the two of you. Here, here's my question. We've now, it's now 2022, and we are in a weird time, bizarre era where representation matters. And what, what's so funny to me is no one is talking about story matters. That storytelling, the act, or, or what a story actually is. No one's talking about that. Where are the people that are protecting stories? And yet, when we get great stories, great stories like Tick, Tick, Boom, a great story, 
we all recognize them, I think. It's like, my God, when, when a story is great, you you like, oh, that the great human truths are in stories. Do you boys think that storytelling is being protected and what, or, or maybe I'm wrong. Am I paranoid? Should I not worry about it? Aren't we gr getting great stories? Do you, Mikey, Tom, are stories protected? Are they, are, are, should we not worry? Or, or is the great legacy of storytelling protected now in 2022? I ask the two of you. Weigh well, in, sons. I, I think you know that I love the MCU. Maybe not as much as you. Actually, I probably do love it as much as you. But I, but I am starting to get worried about uh, some of the content. I think now it's, it, it's getting a little bit too... Well, let me put it this way. I'll tell you what the problem I had with the book of Boba Fett. Hmm. I sent you a super chat the other day, which you did read. Uh, it's completely inaccessible to anybody who is not familiar with Star Wars. Disney Plus is a general audience service. Right. Yep. Par parents subscribe to it to keep, keep their little kitties occupied. And if someone new comes along and doesn't know anything about Star Wars, they would have no idea what was going on in the book of Boba Fett. Right. You're right. And, and uh, content like that, like Spider-Man No Way Home, which I thought, as far as execution was concerned, was an excellent movie. Didn't like the story too much. Because I found it completely derivative of everything that's come before. But yeah, it but was executed well. I, I I thought that your analysis was very cogent. I mean, I I'm I was with you on that. Um, obviously, <laughs> that movie has become one of the most successful films. Not just for Sony or for Marvel, but for all time. You know, um, and and here, let me ask you both this question: We we live in a world where Spider Man No Way Home makes it's going to end up clo it will close in on two billion dollars. Um, only Avengers Endgame has made that kind of money. I mean, uh, maybe Force Awakens, but that was because whatever. But for me, you know, when you're watching something streaming and you're not in a theater, and uh, streaming is the great, um, everything's the same. It's all, when you're watching it streaming, it doesn't matter. You're watching it on your TV. You're clicking on. You're watching a movie. Oh my God! I want to see that. And you're. Wa I, I have a 65 inch screen in my bedroom. I, I watch that predominantly. I watch all of it. All of my content there. And the funny thing about it is, is that all content that I'm watching is the same. You know, I'm not watching like, oh my God, Spider-Man No Way Home made $1.5 billion. But when I watch it at home, click everything in my 65-inch proscenium of my frame is the same. It's all the same. You know, there is no, I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to see this film. And by the way, it used to be that way. Like I couldn't wait to see Back to the Future. Couldn't wait to see Aliens or The Fly or Big Trouble in Little China, which was Fox's output in the summer of 1986. And they promoted all those films together. I'm like, my God, The Fly, Big Trouble in Little China, and Aliens. I want to see all three. And what's, what was so weird was that, of course we wanted to see those movies, by God. And now, where are we? So, Mikey, Tom. Yes, sir. 
Where are we at, guys? I mean, I, where I where do you feel we're at? Do you, are you happy, sad? Where? What? Talk to me, well, Goose. I can I can tell you the difference right now. It's back then. You would be surprised to hear. Okay, such and such a movie. They they, they would announce it with a trailer. You didn't have the internet. You didn't know know really no. that much. I mean, not everybody was in with the the trades like Variety and stuff like that, like they are now. But then you didn't know about oh, so and so is going to be in this movie, or they're making a sequel, and they're going to put so and so in it. Where you didn't hear all these leaks. Where nowadays you hear about a leak from a movie, and it just it sort of deflates the idea of being excited for it. You know, I mean, you can still be excited for it, but you're like, oh, but well, what is that person going to do in it? Oh, what is that character is going to be in it? Oh, okay, but then I'm, I'm not going to be surprised to see them. And I like that element of surprise, and you don't get that that much anymore. Okay. That element of surprise. Well, let me let me just say, uh, Tom, Mikey is older than you, and 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 I'm old too. So I would I would ask Mikey, do we live in a world where are we ignorant of uh, do we have to know things? I mean, you know, you've been watching movies for longer than I have, even I have. And I I um I feel that marketing of films kind of sucks today because th the studios are so afraid like Look, man. If if I was if I was selling Spider Man No Way Home, my trailer would be Tom Holland walks up with his Spider Man costume on. He pulls off his 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 cost his head her hood whatever, and goes, I I don't even understand or believe who I'm fighting in this new Spider Man movie, but my God, it's incredible. And I don't know what to do. And that's it. Well, I, that's the trailer. Well, well, Can you imagine? All, pe I love that idea. But let's let's be realistic. Even with people that you have in your audience right now, there there are people that are predisposed to not liking anything that the Walt Disney Company does. Uh. That would have been a great trailer, and as soon as it came out, there would have been all kinds of whines and moans about why aren't they telling us what's happening in the movie and blah blah blah. Well, I can't, so I better. can't, I can't disagree with you there, sir. Yeah. When 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 Dune premiered, and and we didn't coordinate, we didn't talk about it, and what have you. Both Tom and I watched the movie on HBO Max before we went to the theater. You heathens, the next, oh my God. The next couple of days, and we did it for one reason and one reason only. There's a competition about who knows what first about a piece of content that's coming out because I want to blab it. I want to blab it to somebody else so that I can see I'm in the know and you're not. I know, you're not wrong. And, and one of the reasons that Spider-Man No Way Home made a lot of money and that a lot of us risked getting COVID huh. was because we needed to see the film so that we didn't have to worry about spoilers going down the line. Little did we know that we had already spoiled the entire film. Well, I mean, look. The I, entire I found... film was spoiled before we even saw it. There wasn't a single thing that happened in that film that we didn't know about before we saw an inch of film. Yeah, yeah Look, people started doing spoiler reviews as soon as they were allowed to, before it even came out in, in the U.S. Well, well also, also, Tom, it's like people are sitting down and they're analyzing frame by frame of the trailer looking for, oh, there's missing characters. Ooh. So there has to be three Spider-Men there because right. the, these three enemies are just fighting in space. And when, I mean, when I was coming up, nobody did that. We just well, plopped ourselves down in a movie theater and watched the movie. Oh, yeah. Right. I, and look, I mean, I'm with you. I, I, I am not a huge fan of the whole 
I, I, look, I, I actually kind of find it ridiculous about the whole spoiler culture we live in because it's like, here, here's the thing. All the spoilers people get, um, they're not really, they're just plot points of the movie that got made. Like, it, it's so, it's it, it's kind of weird to me, like, oh my God, I found out that this happened. I'm like, yeah, the movie got made. This, here's the movie that got made. What you're reporting on is stuff that's in the movie that got made. Um, How about not report that? Like, I understand that people want to know, but it's, uh, I find it bizarre that we live in a world where people are like, oh, this is a spoiler. I'm like, well, it's not a spoiler because you're reporting on a movie that got made. And what, if, like, if you knew, if you had script pages or whatever that said that uh, uh, this, uh, there, are, there are multiple Spider-Mans in this movie. Yeah, because that's the movie that's getting made. Right. And it, it's bizarre. I'm like, okay, so... Knowing that, knowing that our, our uh, many Spittermen are going to be in the film, why not stop there? Just be like, okay. And and what's weird, you can't because it's all a business. I get it. I mean, I'm a, I, I'm a YouTube pundit, but at the end of the well, day, it's like it's like um like. You don't have to tell people this, and and I I get you're gonna get like a boost, but even if you get, even if you got a hundred thousand new subscribers, uh, that's only in YouTube analytics, and what I, it, it's only like twenty five bucks. So, and, and I uh, maybe it's more, whatever you know, whatever. I I'm just like, hey man, um, we members of the post geek singularity community we just want to go to see movies and we believe all of us all of us we go into every movie wanting it to be awesome we the members of the post geek singularity community we never be like oh that fucking sucks fuck that no all of us <laughs> when i went in to see matrix resurrections I wanted it to be the greatest movie I'd ever seen. It wasn't, but I liked it. it, it you know, I liked it, it. It wasn't a perfect movie, but it was fun. That's the thing. It, 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 can't, it doesn't have to be the most perfect movie in the world, but nope. if you enjoy it, that's great. And if you don't, that's also fine, you know? But it turned out like with the whole Spider-Man thing, people got so upset because they weren't getting a trailer. They decided we're going to start downvoting every video Sony puts out. And then, right. what does Sony do? They put out this big premiere for a trailer, for like a three-minute trailer, like a big star-studded thing. It's like, you, why would you do that? Just to please the fans? Why? why? It, it, it makes no sense to do a premiere for a trailer. So you're going to go in, see a trailer for three minutes, and then leave? It makes no well, sense. and I've never done that for anything when I was a kid like that. I mean, I do remember them doing like sneak previews, which nowadays they don't really do that much of anymore. No, but um, with Spider Man, that's how I saw E. T. for the first time. Is that a public screening? I saw um, batteries not included at a sneak preview and the movie In and Out at a sneak preview. And now the In and Out sneak preview is one of my favorites. My brother and I went to that. We never laughed so hard. And then when it came out, it was like, oh, I thought this movie was already out. And I remembered, oh, I went and saw a sneak preview of it. But um, the thing about the Spider-Man thing was is that even before it hit theaters in the U.S., people were posting uh, reactions to it, like from the theater in on youtube they were like posting scenes already and i'm like why why would you do that and it was the most plot point important scenes all right but you know i mean people are dicks 
Well, I mean, what's what's really weird is we, we live in a society. We live in a society where now people think that like everybody wants to have something up on someone else, or right. let's make this happen, and and so by selling someone down the river, literally, um, they 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 they'll never get their like you you ex- described. I mean. Someone will show back up with a, 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 a shells or whatever, and and show you, and and it, it's like, wow. Um, I wish that life was different, but it's not. I mean, people are, people are assholes. And and by the way, I think the the horrible place we're at now. One of the things I do find gratifying about it. Is that the deals you can make are worth ten times more than what they would normally be, and at the end of the day, you can actually be a dick and be like, "Okay, you like the house? Let's let's do it. Where's the paperwork? Let's go." And then they're like, "Uh, we don't think we'll sell it to you." I'm like, "So wait, for the last like like ninety minutes, it's not good. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. I don't care." I, I mean, I, I personally care. But at the end of the day, here's the thing. What do we want? You know, what, like, do we want to go party around the world? I mean, do you want to make something? Like, what do we want? We need to commit to this shit and figure it out. Because it's like, at the end of the day, I don't want to be some dilettante going around. around well, hang on. Maybe I do. Uh, stop. Hang on. Yes. If you're going to fly me private around the world, I will go. Yep. And you know what? I think people uh, want it to be like it was pre-COVID. They want that normalcy. And yeah. that's not going to happen for a long time. It probably won't happen. We don't know. But we have to adjust and we have to figure out how to make a way to be happy done during... Yeah, but how do you do that? Like, like, like... You know, you're 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 telling us what we should do, but how does one get there? I, how do you I tell somebody they how they can be happy? I mean, everybody is so, you know, we don't know. We don't know what they want. We don't know what makes them unhappy. And it's, you know, when we start becoming psychiatrists, it's like, well, fuck that. I don't know. By the way, Tom, if you want math, I have plenty of math. Um. I, I, I don't know. I, I I think people are using COVID as an excuse because I think a lot a lot of the fandom culture that the way that it currently exists, it would exist without COVID. Yep, I agree. So Mikey, you know, there there was a movie that um, I went I wanted to see last year, uh, The Good Liar, with Helen Mirren. And Ian McKellen, two yep. fantastic actors that I love. Hated the movie. The movie was terrible. Oh wow! I I didn't I didn't enjoy it. I thought it was slow. I thought it was kind of dull. I have watched it again on streaming, and I said, well, maybe I was a little harsh <laughs> and what have you, but it. You never really know with content. You really just have to <clears throat> try things out. Yeah. You can't even know, you can't even know from trailers whether something is, is good or not. You know, RM asked me once on a stream uh, what I thought, what advice I would have for fandom, and, and my answer to that is watch something you don't think you would like. Huh. Uh, that's really good advice. The wheel um, of time can, is can, not can, something. Can you repeat that one more time, sir? I mean, I mean, I, I, I would say Mikey has a really great point to make, and I, I, I would like to emphasize it. Please, please, if you could, tell us what you just did, and and give us your sage-like advice. Yeah, watch something that you don't think you would like, because you don't really know whether you would like it or not. The wheel of time was not 
really in my wheelhouse. I, I'm not really into like the, the Jason and the Argonauts kind of medieval adventure type stories or what have you. But Stubble McShave liked the books so much and, and he preached about the books so much and I subscribe to Josh McCougar's rule of uh, giving a show three episodes huh. before before you dump it. Uh, and by the way, I, I love saw, Josh. I love Josh McCoo. He's a great guy. And as soon as I saw Daniel Henney in episode two, I was <laughs> down. I'm I'm going to watch the show. And by the time I got to the third episode, I was hooked. Yep. And, and I and I watched it through episode eight. I think the whole thing was fantastic. Anybody that's in the audience, uh, they need to pop over to the Positive Fandom channel, which is RM's channel, mm. and listen to the recap with her and Stovall. Uh, it's a really good show, and I didn't and I didn't think that I would like it. I was convinced that I wouldn't like it. I was sure that after episode three, I would drop out. and And I watched the whole thing, and I'm looking forward to season two so you never really know you have to take chances you spend well you also have to be a discerning of... viewer you have to be smart and uh, know what's up yeah I... well that's one that's one thing i like about your audience excuse me for one minute uh that's one thing i like about your audience is that it's an international audience it's a planetary audience because yeah because i'm like you rob I, I wonder a lot of times whether or not a lot of the things that we <laughs> complain about are particularly an American problem. I think a lot of them are, to be honest. Although I do watch Midnight's Ed, so I'm not so sure. But I, but I, <laughs> no, but I, 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 look, I love, as you know, I mean, I'm a huge fan of, of Midnight's Edge. I mean, Andre and Tom and, and uh, everyone, I mean, I watch them all the time. And I think they do a really good... I mean, here's the thing. <laughs> I, I, I find that all of our audiences, all of them, we all want, they want, we want, we're the same people. All we want is one thing. And what that thing is, is great storytelling. I mean that's it, and you can you can buy the I, like I feel like there are people like oh my god he looks just like, and 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 you know you can there's all kinds of things that can make you look like your favorite character now, and, and you never really know where it's coming from. No, you have no idea. You you just don't know, and like okay, well if I wanted to I could cosplay as a Jedi Knight, I could you know hold out my arms and before I go to work in the morning and now I'm going to go to John Campion's show in the morning um it's it's like okay well, then it works and it's all good but at the end of the day you have to ask yourself like so um if Armageddon comes you know like in this new show it's it's like okay well we can uh that's it. Like, like I, I, I feel that our society, we're not thinking clearly. It's not that hard. The idea that, like, hey, wait, uh, climate change isn't real. Uh, I, I'm like, um, okay. Uh, I let's... think I, I, I think I read an article. Uh, it was 67 or some degrees in Alaska yesterday. I think climate it's the hottest real. Alaska has ever been. You know, it's like that. What's that movie that just came out? The uh, don't don't look up. They yeah. actually have they actually have uh, astronomers that are uh, reviewing that movie and saying, okay, this is real, this is not real, this is what would happen, this is what would not happen. So, yeah, they, they're really saying, look, this could happen this way, but probably not this way, which is really cool. I like how 
Netflix will get these people to come on and. Oh, it's great. I mean, uh, look, it was a, a that movie was like it's a mad, 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 mad world. It was a huge star-studded cast. It was great, right. but but what I didn't like about it was at the end of the movie, the 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 the, uh, the missiles. It will still end, even though, like, no, the Russians stopped it. No, they didn't. And um, my whole thing is this. The human race is an amazing evolutionary group. It's really impressive. It's it, it, If you look at it over the last 10,000 years, sure, are, are human beings douchebags? Of course, we are. We're dumb. But... Say what you want to say. We live in a world where things are getting better. And yet our modern, our pop culture entertainment are, are, are like, they're like the last vestiges of people like, well, you know, before we get clever and funny, just, just wait, this guy, he wants to make Phantasm 78. I'm like, by the way, I'd watch that shit. I'd work on it with him. I'd love Phantasm 78. But at the end of the day, it's like, what matters? What do we want from life? And the, I don't know that. I don't know the answer. I know that it's time to go. Okay. I must leave, Tom. I must go. Right? Should I? Okay. Well, it, you know what? Before I go, Tom, let me ask you this. How are you? Please tell me. First of all, how are you doing? And what does 2022 mean to you? Oh, I thought you were about to say, how are you doing? Like I had that line from <laughs> Kindergarten Cop. Who is your daddy and what does he do? No, um, well, I'm, I'll have to say this. I'm doing well. And to answer your question from earlier, what I like about the PGS is the people. I've made some really good friends. You, Mikey Lito, RM with her great channel, uh, Stubble McShave. I, I got like a great group of people. Emma Banning, the lovely Emma Banning. She's fantastic. And, and, and everybody really. She 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 is really marvelous. I mean, she's amazing. She's awesome. She she's very very kind, and you don't see that that much these days with. The amount of kindness no. that she shows. And I'm and sorry, that, Rob. I love her humor. Did she, you know what? We all do. Hang on. I do, too. I, 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 I love her jokes. I just make it a funny thing to say. And for me to say I don't. Her, her, her jokes are actually very witty and very funny. And Especially terrible the at the same Christmas time. One she, did. she did a great Christmas uh, thing. She put up. Here's my uh, obligor, obligor, uh, my standard Christmas post. And it was a picture of a post decorated for Christmas. So I took that picture and I put a fire around it and I posted it back to her and I said, no, this post is on fire. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what? Come on, man. Her jokes are what they are, but don't, don't, don't promote them further than they deserve to be promoted. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. You know. But I'll, I'll, I'll be. But in all, in all it was due respect, yes, sir. It's all good. Twenty twenty two is going to be really great. I think I, I, I think so too. And by the way, uh, I've always thought that, like, I mean, we're going there anyway. I mean, uh, we're. Uh, by the way, Tom. Yeah. Mikey. It's 2022. I've been it's following a, it since five o'clock this morning. Oh my god! Like, well, that's that's the first place that I thought it was Tonga, but it turned out to be somewhere else. Mm. Uh, but uh, so, Mikey, since you're here, let me ask you. Yes, sir. Please tell me. I mean, what would you like to get out of 2022? Like, given a choice. No money is no object, or things are no object. What would you, what would twenty at the end of twenty twenty two, what do you want to say you did? Like, yo, man, I did what? 
Well, well, if I if I say opinions are like assholes, will you get demonetized? Probably, but who cares? Say it. It's it's New Year's Eve. You say what you want. Just just, and this is me included. We all need to be a little bit nicer to each other. Uh, I plan on doing a, a show on my channel called Word, and the word for today and for the rest of the year should be civility. Look wow, I love that. Is that going to be every single day? Will you say that? Today's no, word I, is civility. I love that, though. Well, uh, I did my first show, I think, August twenty, August 25th. And I haven't done another show since because I absolutely hated it. I hated my own show. Come on, man. Why? Because <laughs> it was terrible, Rob. <laughs> Dude, but, I mean, and, you can't. You can, no, look. I'm. I'm I'm working on it, so don't don't worry about it. I, I'm going to turn out some more content. I definitely have a broadcast planned for I think it's January 25th. That's good. That's good. But I would say this: like, if you want to go out, like, you need we got to get you monetized. You need a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of views. Yes, I know. That's how I'm you not, get monetized. I'm not, I'm not I'm not really worried about that. I just wanted. to turn out content about things that well, I I'm worried. Today. I am, I am and, worried. So, and, come on, man. Let's have a synergistic... Forget what you want to talk about in the show. I appreciate what you want to say. But let's get you monetized and 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 uh, be a YouTube partner. I know. Well, I, when you first get I monetized, do. it's like, I made 12 cents. Like, oh my God, it's amazing. It's great. But here's the thing, dude. Get some... Get some monetization. Um, it would be great for you. It'd be so good. So Let, let's get RM monetized. She has more subscribers than I do, and she's putting out more content. Than yeah, I but do. she'll she's gonna get monetized. Uh, and and by the way, who doesn't love? Her? We all love her. Oh, she's fantastic. Fantastic. She's I mean, two hundred and ninety nine subscribers at the moment. She's just about at three hundred. And Rob is just about at 45,000 almost. Right. Yeah, but it's not comparing it to contrasting. I mean, I mean, yeah. the, 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 the thing about R -M is she needs, um, the way YouTube works is you need a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of viewership. That's a big deal. And it kind of sucks, but that's what they want to know. And I'm like, all right. Okay, and she's pump she's pumping out the content. It's great content. She has good guests. Yeah, all, all all sorts of people from all over the PGS. So people need to uh, tune in and support the shows. No, yeah. and uh, it's really great. Uh, you need to do something about the drop time. They're at a little odd time. Oh, <laughs> I can explain that. It's because uh -oh. she's had uh, Stubble on there and Dieter doing shows. Oh, and they're from overseas. At the time that she posted them, they're already up. But if she posts them at like 5 p.m., they'll be asleep and they won't be able to join the chat. Oh, right. my God. So, yeah, it's a, wow, it's, it's nice to hear you guys talk about other streamers that uh, need help. I mean, come on, well, man. I'll tell you this. We know who well, needs some help everybody. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. Yeah, we all come from you, Rob, so, you know. I know. I, I, I know. I'm the genesis. That's me, the genesis. Listen, gents. Um, I need to go to bed. I need to go to sleep. Um, I don't think well, either one of you. you you're you know. gonna need to do a super chat show because uh, there are people that have posted chats, me included. Oh well, fuck it. Let's do those. Come on, man. I want to get. A, I, I will. Let's 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 talk super chats, gents. I, I mean, think you, hang on. What, now, now, let me. Do go. you think you should do them now? Or, oh my or God, no. We should do them now because. Wow, there's a lot I didn't I I didn't even realize. So hang on, uh, there's a lot of really great stuff. So, two hundred watt studio says Boba on Cloud City. What if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me. That's a guy who doesn't respect human life. He would not rule with respect. I mean, you're not wrong. Guys, gents, you're both here. I mean, you've seen the book of Boba Fett. Um, 
you know, I, I, I Boba Fett's a bad guy. And I think the real problem with the show, I liked it. I, uh, to be honest, I liked the episode. But I do understand this because he's a bad guy. And and this new episode is like, I'm going to be a respectful leader. I'm like, what the fuck? You're a bounty hunter. You Darth Vader, When Darth Vader needs some like dirty work, he's like, uh, Boba. Like, give me a break. You're a bad guy. And, and the entirety of, of, of Disney has tried to make Boba Fett a good guy. Like, well, I'm going to rule with uh, respect. Like, why? Why would you do that? Why who, Kill every motherfucker in, in your way. What the fuck? Uh, why would you? What? I have a theory about this, Rob. I know, I'm he sorry. spent that, all that time with the Mandalorian. And I think what I think his way of doing things may have rubbed off on Boba. But then again, for all we know, Boba could go batshit crazy before the end of the series. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's just one episode so far, and that first episode really was, let's bring you up to speed of where where we are. So you're slowly getting to see where he's coming back from. It's a it's the slow setup, and then the next episode will probably be a bit better. And so forth, but it's you gotta let that. Let's reintroduce this character to you. Let's show you what this is. And I are you gonna make it, Rob? I think that uh, the the stormtrooper that may have been maybe Jabba threw him in there before we even saw that. Yeah, but oh, okay. What was inside the pit when uh, Boba went in? Here's the thing. Are we getting the story that is good? Well, who do you blame for that? Because I blame Favreau. You blaming Rodriguez? I, blame I, I, I would, I would blame them both. I mean, to be honest, I mean, look. At the end of the day, it, it, it's like okay. The first, if you're going to make a show about Boba Fett, the first question you have to ask is, who is he? Like we don't know. And I, the idea that, like, they already played... The, the Mandalorian can be Clint Eastwood, can be the man with no name. That's good. I'm fine with that. Boba Fett is a fucking straight-up murderous fuck. He's a bad guy. And I feel that, like, the first thing they do... Look, I'm a straight white male. Give me Fennec Shand, Shand any day of the week. I'm like... I love a hot Asian girl like the, anyone else does. It's great. So, okay, so you're going to check your inclusion box. Fine. It's, I don't care. But, I mean, if you're going to fight, if you're going to do this, I, I like, what is it you want your character to be? And I don't feel, I, I watch, look, I, I like, the first episode of the book of Boba Fett because, you know, I felt that, well, how did he escape from the Sarlacc pit? Like, we have to see all that shit. It's fine. But it should be done in an effervescent light way. It shouldn't define your character. And yet it did. And I'm like, fuck, man. I just... I don't know. It's... it's I just wish people were better writers. That's, that's all I... That's really what it comes down to. Just write better. Please. What's the next one? What's the next one? Oh, man. I don't know. I, you mean in Mandalorian or Bo Book of Boba Fett? No, no, in the Super Chat. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, sorry. I was, well. Sorry, I got you off topic there, Rob. Uh, well, there's a lot of good ones, actually. Uh, oh, well, hang on. Uh, what? uh, Cardinal Sin says there's romance between Han Solo and Princess Leia. You, you yeah, well, uh, well, did I say that one? Yeah, you already did that one. Oh, well, then, he, one. okay, he's got, he's got multiple ones here. Uh, Two Underwatch Studio then says, just show, oh, I, I said that too, a Twi'lek 
leaving Fett's room? Yeah, okay. Let me just speak on that. Um, it's very weird that the Star Wars universe is very sexless. Isn't it, guys? Yeah, I think so. It's covered in my super chat, which we'll get to eventually. It's bizarre. I mean, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. And, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I don't think that like Jennifer Beals, if Jennifer Beals and Boba Fett got down, would that be weird? No, because she's a beautiful woman and Boba Fett's Boba Fett. Like I, I, well, anyway, anyway, well, I'll go on anyway. So 200 watt studio goes on to say. Uh, Boba on Cloud City. What if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me. That's a guy who doesn't respect human life. He would not rule with respect. Bro, I feel you. I, I think Boba Fett is an evil fuck. And the idea is like... Uh, Jabba ruled with fear. I will rule with respect. Why? Like, like, w why? Because the writers told you to. It's so weird. It's bizarre. I don't, I don't dig it. I, I'm like, um, you know, Boba Fett, you're not, you're not a guy. You're not an anti-hero. You're a bad, bad, bad dude who sells people into slavery or kills them. You're, you're hired by Darth Vader. You're an awful person, but I love you. I love you. Uh, 200 Watt Studio also goes on to say, or actually he doesn't go on to say, or he, you know, it's Cardinal Sin. Cardinal Sin. What a nice gesture. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Cardinal Sin says, hey, WGA award winning writer. They put the stormtrooper in the Sarlacc pit because it served the story. They had to answer the question, how did Boba Fett survive the Sarlacc pit? That every Star Wars fan was going to ask. Happy New Year. Well, first of all, Gil, thank you. I don't that think nice, that was a nice super chat. Thank it, you. it was a very, very nice. But I, I but here's the thing: I don't. <sighs> here's what bothers me about that. Um, literally, you're gonna be the the what three PO says in 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 Jedi. Well, if you're uh, consumed in the star Starlight pit for a thousand years, which is that was kind of goofy. I mean, it was. I mean, let's face it. I mean, uh, 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 3PO is a, he's a, he's a, he's a drama queen. And, and while theoretically, if you looked up on Wikipedia about how long it takes to get devoured in the Sarlacc pit, he's probably not wrong. But like in reality, you know, he's a guy that fell into the Sarlacc pit. And if it's like, um, it, it took him. It took him five minutes to get out. Like, why wouldn't it? I mean, between the time he fell into the Sarlacc pit and and Jabba's sail barge blew up, was five minutes, maybe. And when he finally got out, he's like, oh, I, oh. And, he, and anyone could have anyone with flamethrowers and uh, blasters, they all would have got out there. Wouldn't they? And it, it, I mean, I feel like, okay, we have to show it so it can become canonical Star Wars. But at the end of the day, I'm like, come on, dudes. Is there more? Is there, I, I you know, I felt the, the whole, and even the sand people thing. I'm like, dude, this is a little simplistic, isn't it? Like, I don't know. Um, hang on. Moving. I will. Cardinal Sin. Thank you, by the way, so much. But I disagree. Just, I want to say, it didn't just move the story. Oh, Mikey. 
Oh, Mikey. Mikey says, sex. God damn it. I love, God damn it. I love when you talk about this. Sex is a part of life. And Americans, avoidance of the topic in any media is puerile, infantile, and frankly, stupefying. Okay, Mikey, since you're here, agree 100%. Why, though? Why is that true? Why, 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 why are we so, you know, we're coming off a week when Billie Eilish was like, Billie Eilish, who wrote the latest Bond theme, talks about at 11 years old she got into watching hardcore porn and it fucked her up. Like, I mean, where well, are we I at mean, there? there? There's the problem right there. She watched hardcore porn as a child. What's that about? But any, anyway, you know, this is a whole show, this topic. But um, in brief, it, it's uh, Americans are afraid of naked bodies. They, are, uh, I think, I said later on in the chat, it, sex, sex scenes and content. It doesn't have to be explicit. Titillation works much better than explicit. Agreed. Sex. So, you know, we should discuss that at another time. Keep it moving. Yeah, but but I look. I mean, look. I I find. You know, I I loved erotic thrillers. I did love Basic Instinct, and and uh, I did love Body Heat. I did love. We got we Fatal Attraction. Fatal Attraction is a movie about a guy, who like, what's so weird is, I find it strange. That no longer. Like, like the idea of, of a guy that is just, they call it, the kids call it thirsty. If you're a guy that goes to a business meeting and your wife's out of town and you find yourself thirsty over some girl that is, is doing whatever she does to make you thirsty, like you can't, you're like, I, I gotta go there and whatever, I, I, I who am I to judge? I'm just saying that that like what I find weird is not only does our modern age not only do we not have a sexual component. I mean, it, it's it's fucking bizarre. Like if you're a, an artist and you love. I mean, whether it's film or music or whatever, you know, you go to arts festivals or this, that, and the other thing, and you find people, and and nowadays, no one's finding anyone. No one's doing anything. Like, well, I'm going to go on Tinder and swipe right. or what? I, I've never even been on Tinder. I don't even know what the difference between swiping right or left is. It's just a pop culture artifact that I think about, and I don't even know what it means. But it's bizarre. Like, why is it that our world today, why don't people want to fuck? I don't get it, man. Fucking is awesome. Whether you're straight, gay, I don't give a fuck. The fact is, playing with other people's genitalia and having them play with yours, it's awesome. In every respect. Everybody should be fucking all the time. And, uh, and, and by the way, it's, it's, it's very, it's all about reciprocity. You know what? If you're a douche that want it's one-sided, no, no, fucking is two-sided. What you want is you want to be with somebody that you want to touch and you want someone to be with you that they want to touch you. It's all good. And, and Frank, there's I, no wrong answer, right? Frankly. Frankly, playing with other people's skin is fun. Right? I mean, my God, what is better in life than sitting next to someone? I don't care if you're a dude that loves other dudes. Let me tell you, the sheer joy of just, and I'm, 
not saying I might not know anything about this, but my God, come on. The sheer joy. If you're a guy and you're, let's say you're gay and you're sitting next to another dude, jerking that guy off, feeling a man get hard in your hand, come on. I'm telling you, it's all good. And for those of you heterosexuals out there, um, you girls, same thing. When you when you stroke a man's uh, unit and you feel it growing in your hand, or you know you do something like stick your finger in his ass and the same thing happens, it's all good. But you're there with somebody. It's fantastic. It's fantastic to be with someone and to look. We're intellectual beings. If you are a person that can give someone else physical pleasure freely because you want to. What a great gift that is. And my God, as long as you both are understanding of one another and you, you get it, you understand where you're at, there is nothing better than to give another person physical pleasure. As who's next, long Rob? What's that? Who's, who's next? Oh, sorry. <laughs> let sorry. me, uh, let me, oh, wait, hang on. Oh, my God. God, uh, Mikey, hang on. Thank you for uh, keeping me on on point. Um, well, the next person is An Anthony Gonzalez. Says Happy New Year to you all, my people. So, I was born in '79, and am still catching up on movies as I should. Well, God bless you. Thank you. Uh, still have yet to see some kind of wonderful. Can you guys give a non-spoiler review and tell me if I should see it? I can do that. First of all, <clears throat> so for those of you who don't know, uh, some kind of wonderful directed by Howard Deutsch came on the heels of Pretty in Pink. It was a John Hughes film. Stars Eric Stoltz, who did not get to be Marty McFly. Here's why you should watch some kind of wonderful. First of all, it's fucking great. I love it so much. And uh, Leah Thompson is in it. But here's why some kind of wonderful is so good. Because, okay, I, you know what? I can't say that. You asked for a non-spoiler review. I was just, oh, I can't, okay, okay, here's the thing about Some Kind of Wonderful, why you should watch it is because the idea of art, the artistic impulse, the, the main character, the Eric Stoltz character is a fine artist, and, and the idea that, that art still matters, and what, in his case, his fine artness translates to his romanticism and the idea that an artist is also a romantic is something by the way dudes guys men gents you guys have to be we need more romantics amongst us i'm tired of listening to the smash the patriarchy you know what um men are the very best at being romantic when they want to be. We need that. We need that. We need, we need, we need romance. Salvador Dali, oh, wait, wait, hang on. Salvador hey. Dalliances sends in a super chat and says, Happy New Year, you beautiful people. My God, what a name. Um, have you procured the 2021 Andorian Blue Chardonnay or Cardassian Canar Red Blend yet? I have not. And you know what? Um, Canar, that's a Cardassian delicacy. My God, thank you. <sighs> hey, Rob. For bringing it up. Yes. Uh, Tom is frozen. He's in the waiting room. Wait, what? Who? What? What? Tom, your other guest is in the waiting room. Who? Who? What? Well, what? Well, I have to. I I only can have three people. Me, you. 
Well, Tom's one of the people. You got to take him out and put him back in. That's what I'm telling you. Wait. Oh. Oh. Oh my God. Are, really? He's gone. Yep. Oh man. Look at that. Fuck. Hang on. Thank you for that. Uh, thanks, Mikey. I didn't know that was the case. Uh, in a world where Tom, can you not get in? Hang on. You. Know, you know what I have to do is I have to disconnect. Hang on. Clear the chat and do, like just give me a give me a second. Charlie, I'm Charlie, I'm reading the chat. You're very funny. Oh, there he is. There he is. He, Tom's back. There you are. Tom, please tell us I'm we here. can hear you. Oh, thank God. I, I just figured you were taking a nap, Tom. No, I my my internet reset itself. Oh, yeah. well, that you happens, know what? That I to me too. Usually the lights go out. Okay, so Tom, okay, so, uh, I gotta ask you. Salvador Dalians has asked you if you've procured or me procured the Andorian Blue Chardonnay or the Cardassian Canara Red Blend. I uh, those are Star Trek themed wines. Do you have any of those? No, but don't you behind you? Well, no, these are different. And uh, 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 Zephyr Chan did send me uh, Klingon wines. By the way, um, they're great. I drank them. The lovely Zephyr Chan. Oh man, no, she's in, she's in China now. She's with. Yeah. Uh, Aeon. Uh, says, uh, happy, says new year, happy New Year, Rob and Rob Elizabeth. And Rob, I Rob, just I watched just the watched getaway, getaway from 1972. 1972. That would be, that would be, what's her face and him. And him. Steve McQueen and Catherine. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and yes, and Steve McQueen, McQueen is, is, yes. Is, yes. And, uh, and uh, you know, you that know, girl that, girl that girl died in Love Story. She was also in uh, Butch and Sundance. Uh, Ellie, Ellie Ellie McGraw. Ellie McGraw. Ellie McGraw. That's it. No. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> so, now, but man, no. So, but so then, let's uh, uh, um, uh, just watch the getaway. Watch the getaway. Loved it. Should I watch, I watch a watch the, remake? the remake? Should should it be remade, it be remade again? again? Okay. First of all, here's the okay, thing. First of all, Ali McGraw and C. McQueen was a singular, like, you can remake it or do whatever you want. I don't think that it should be remade. I think it's it was cool when it was made. It was awesome. Uh, like, now, our, the world is not the same, like, it's not the same place. It's not, it's not... By the way, I, you know what? I I hate the world we live in now because it's not fun. Our our world. Is, I would tell you, yeah, Ali McGraw and Steve McQueen. What a smoldering couple! That whole affair it ruined Ali McGraw's marriage. It's all. But today, it would be all like sedate or whatever, and 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 the main character. Steve McQueen would be like, like you're, 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 you know, you're, you're really toxic. I, I don't know, man. Remake it, remake the getaway, and make, make a guy like totally misogynistic and a girl digging it. Because in this day and age, I mean, it wouldn't that be transcendent? I don't know. Could be wrong. Any more uh, super chats? Hey, yeah, Jesus. Gutierrez says, Happy New Year, Rob. Keep it fucking metal. Fuck yeah, dude. I will. I will keep it as metal as fuck. You know where Dave Parker is right now? He's in Nolens. He is in the Big Easy. How fucking metal is that? I tried. I even offered him I offered him money to come back. Uh, he didn't say anything. I don't know. Stomach shave. Says a mid-level drama and thriller 
mid-level dramas and thrillers have moved to streaming. A movie like Dead Poets Society would be a limited drama series and be watered down. I don't think you're wrong. A, uh, a movie like Amadeus would never get made today. It would surely not be a theatrical release. You know, first of all, for those of you who don't know, Stubble is one of the great uh, proponents of Wheel of Time, but he's not wrong. I mean, the idea, if you think about... You know, when I went and saw Amadeus in the theater in, in 85, there were two movies I wrote reviews in my high school newspaper. One was The Killing Fields, and the other was Amadeus. Very different films. But both brilliant movies. Neither one of them yeah. would ever get released theatrically. Now. I remember watching that in school. They actually showed us The Killing Fields. Dude. In history class. The, yeah, Death Prawn. I mean, it was it was insane. And And it's bizarre to live in a world... Like I, I, I have to tell you, I will, I will tell all of you right now. I used to think that I, I, I wanted to spend the rest of my life making movies, and movies were understood as being a ninety-minute to two-hour art form. And I'm like, that's what that was the raison d'etre of my life. I mean, that's all I wanted to do, and I've done it, you know, in various capacities. I'm not Steven Spielberg, you know, whatever. But still, I feel that that I've done good work. Like I can, if I if if my life came to an end today, I would feel like, yeah, you know, I I I did the work, but I don't think I'm done yet. And I love the two-hour format of movies. And and people need them. But now more than ever, it's so hard. Like, if you have the money to make a movie, great. But if you don't, which I don't, I have to, you know, every day I'm calling people on the phone and, like, what can we do? And what can we do? it's just insane. And the fact is, at the end of the day, like right now, I love movies, man. I'd love to make another one more, two more movies, and just make we, something we that people loved. About, like, so we were having that talk about story earlier tonight, you and me, and RM, and I came up with a brilliant idea. That it was a perfect idea. For a Dude, I, I, by the way, I don't think I'm not going to exploit that idea. I it's a gr that's a great idea. I mean, however. Your idea is what's called a premise. Right. What we need to do is turn that into a story. And your premise was actually really good. And it, I'm like, don't don't think I, I'm already, there's, as they said in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, dice are rolling. A great idea, by the way. Great idea. Yeah. So, uh, Stubble, thank you for that. Um I do believe that's the last of the Super Chats. I think it's time. Uh, it's a new year. It's a new day. It's a new year. It's a new day. Um, yeah. That's what a great song that is. I won't get into it. Um, mm -hmm. As a white middle-aged man, perhaps I should not sing it. Whatever. Whatever. My God. I want to thank everyone. It is now... 3.44, it's 6.44 on the East Coast and around the world. I want to thank all of you, every single member of the Post Geek Singularity. Happy New Year. Thank you for being here. Mikey, Tom, my God. Uh, it has been so great to get to know you both. You've been very supportive of my work and Mikey's uh, writings. Um, if you haven't watched shows where... Mikey, where first of all, Mikey, where can people find you on social media? Uh, well, I'm currently active on my leisure blog, which is at MikeyLito.blog. Uh, so you can find me writing there. 
and uh, the YouTube channel is uh, Mikey Lito Live, and uh, I actually have a direct address to that, which is at MikeyLito.live. So there will be content coming. Uh, I most of the content like this goes into uh, a um, a playlist called uh, Side Pieces. Hmm. Where I do little appearances. Am I your side piece, things. Mikey? Is that what you're saying? You absolutely are, Mr. Burnham. Fuck yeah, dude. I want to be your side piece. Please. I am perfectly willing and able. And thank you for a, a, all of the support of my content. I, I appreciate that. And I think uh, anybody who has branched off from your channel, we all appreciate the support that you give us. Man, let me tell you. I mean, I I have really loved uh, the writing you've done. I'm happy to share it. Um, your, your your cogent analysis is something that we can all benefit from experiencing. And again, one of the great things that uh, 2021 brought me is closer to you. And uh, I think your your knowledge and your insight is a worthy cause. And everyone should pay attention to you. So subscribe, like, hit the no notification bell for Mikey's channel. Yeah, every service, Mikey Lito Live, uh, especially on Twitter. I'm pretty active. So, Tom? And everybody should everybody should check out the documentary about Mikey Lito's on. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, Thank you. That's we, on uh, Amazon Prime Video. My name is Paulie Murray. Now, now I've covered this, but let's let's get back into it. My name is Polly Murray. Is a documentary on Amazon. Mikey, tell us about that and why. Why does that documentary have a connection to you? Well, Polly Murray's my uh, aunt, my father's sister, and uh, she was pretty active in the um, area of human rights. First with. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I get hung up on labels, so I'll just leave it at human rights. Uh, and uh, she's a very important person to me and someone that I think everyone should know about. And uh, as always, my thanks to, uh, hopefully I'll get the names right, because I haven't talked to them in a while. But, uh, the directors of the movie, Oh. Uh, Julie and Betsy, Betsy West, and I can't remember Julie's name. Right now. Oh, but by the way, the the Julie film Collins. is absolutely it's fantastic. It's and really with had, it's with really what, good. And what with what they had to work with, because I I know my aunt. I spent a lot of time with her, and with what they had to work with, they did an outstanding job. So. People that think that it's a slideshow, they can just think something else because she really didn't seek publicity. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's very little archival film on her, but uh, they did a lot of research on it and they do uh, fantastic documentaries, uh, Betsy and Julie, because they also did RBG. And the most recent documentary that they did is called Julia for julia child and i support all of their work so oh. seek out all of their stuff they're fantastic i i couldn't agree more i mean my name is Polly murray it was it's a fascinating very compelling documentary about a well a person in a certain part of history that um my god to have that light shown on her and to find out that you sir uh, <laughs> that was your aunt how cool is yeah. that i mean that's that's one of the great things about this you know it's not like i want to be you know like oh my god look at us but really i mean that's it's a it's a very compelling story that's as resonant today you know it's funny <laughs> i i don't mean to denigrate your your aunt but i'm like there's a character i would like to see on star trek tell me 
tell me the allegorical story. Where is the Polly Murray of the Star Trek universe? I would I would like to see that and 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 that struggle could be really interesting. And you wouldn't have to say like, well, this person is that. No. No, you no. This person could just tell that story or do their thing. It could be very cool. And and to me that the documentary is a celebration and it's also it's an affirmation as well. It's really good. And I'm, I'm um, not I'm, I'm not going to let you get me started on Star Trek tonight. I I just will say that uh, RM and I did do a review of the film again called My Name is Paulie Murray. It's on her channel, Positive Fandom. So uh, if you go to the Mikey Lito Live channel, there's links to all the PGS channels that I know about, and anybody who's in the PGS, if you have a channel and I don't know about it, just send an email to MikeyLitoLive at gmail.com, and I will make sure that your channel is represented on my channel. Hmm. Well, listen, Mikey, Tom, I think it's time that I call this. I call this crazy night. Uh, it's 4 o'clock, almost 4 o'clock in the morning, which means it's 7 o'clock where you are. Um, I need to go to bed. Elizabeth, <laughs> Elizabeth's going to be like, where are you? And I'm like, great, you'll come on the channel for the first time, the for Elizabeth Views. By the way, for those of you who don't know, this channel is still Elizabeth Views whining about movies. I know Elizabeth went to bed long ago, but... This we haven't done this since June of 2021. It's good to be back. Thank you, Elizabeth. You know, and Tom knows this. I don't know if you know, but I call you Harcourt Fenton Mud. <laughs> Harcourt Fenton Mud. Have you been drinking again? Because well, because because Mikey. I said yeah. you 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 keep trying to like hide hot toys from from her, and when she finds oh out God. about them, oh my God, oh, okay. Harcourt. Oh, dude, dude. Uh, you should see a receipt I got today. I'm like, don't tell her. And what's really well, this is her show, so she's gonna watch. I know. I, I, it's funny. I can't. I can't. Like, she'll never get to this. The end of this. She'll be like, so. To be honest, there's a very large order, like, like, like Tony Montana cocaine order coming in not cocaine for those of you who don't know I, I'm making an analogy uh, yeah and and I have to make sure that I intercept the box she can't like I don't know what I'm going to do I'm gonna be like where is it like where is it man come on no it's going to be it's, it's, if she sees it she'll be like what the fuck is this I'm like and I'll be like, oh, I don't know. What is what is this? She'll be like, what? It's huge. It's a gigantic box. I'm like, <laughs> there's a there's a red question mark next to you. Oh, damn! Tom's gone. Tom's gone. Well, gents, Mikey, good night, Rob. I'm out. Hang on, let me make sure. Nope, we're all good. Everyone, by the way, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting this channel. And uh, thank you to my moderators. Uh, mm, uh, she's she's a moderator. Uh, I don't even Josh know. Was Josh, Josh was here. Josh was here. Joshua Levesque, thank you so much. Mikey, thank you. Thank everyone who's been here. My God, welcome to 2022. Wow. I want to thank everyone for the Burnett work and uh, uh, everyone that is a, a member or whatever. You support the channel via Super Chats and Tips. Thank you so much. It's a, it's very much appreciated. By the way, 2002 or 2022 is going to have some crazy stuff happening, especially on this channel. It's going to get weird. And, and I don't know if I want it to get weird, but it's going to have to get weird. So that's cool. So members, we're gonna hold do a whole thing. 
you're already members, it's fine. Next week we'll have we have member chats every other week. Not this weekend, but next weekend we do. So I can't wait to see you. And and you know what? You know, there's a lot of people who are members. Like even if you pay me a buck a month, I appreciate it. But come to the live chats. It's fun. They really should. Yeah, really you know, if you're a member time. of the channel, even if you pay a dollar or uh, come to the live chats because it's a really great group of people. And and I, I feel it's awesome. And if you're going to if you're going to be a member of the channel, just it's, it's it, at whatever level you can come to the chats. Come to the chats. It's fun. It's good. So next weekend, not this weekend, next weekend, the first chat of 2022. But come, come. I mean, people, you're already paying. You uh, you pay me a buck a month or a hundred a month. It doesn't matter. What I want is to see your lovely face. Just come on, Mikey, right? Yes. It's Tom's back. Tom's time. back. Oh, hey, Tom. You're back. So, Tom. I'm back. We're signing off. I'm going away now. Okay. Thank you for being. By the way, Tom, uh, explain yeah. to people why are we all goof people? Because no one is perfect and we all make mistakes. God that is damn why it. We all goof at some point in life. And it is okay. It is okay to be a goof person. And I am so glad to be a part of this community. Well, Tom, let me just say, from my perspective, <laughs> you sent me a letter. And uh, I yeah. don't know why, but it was a typo. It was a typo. We are all goof people. I, I think one of the great things about this community is that you can send me a great heartfelt letter, which it was. Yeah. And then it still had a typo that I can sit there and go like, wow, I, you know, I'm sure you thought it was wacky that I fixated on it, but it was brilliant. Brilliant. You know, you didn't know, you know, you, no, I, you, 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 it, you, you wanted it to be a D and it became an F. Yeah. That was what it is. A D became an F. And you know what? That was genius that was brilliant oh wow. sure we could all be good people i i thank you rob for letting we me are... come on and as oh. i said it, i i thank you for your friendship and i hope that this year you have one of the best years i really do and i hope you you get everything you want and that things go really well for you and come east, dude. I'm coming. Yeah. No, 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 we're gonna. We're, uh, uh, we're. I'm coming to New York, NYC, the entire East Coast. We we are gonna have live shows. Don't worry. Um, I just made a deal that will facilitate that, <laughs> which is yeah. good. It has to do with John Campia. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's good. And and uh, look, my 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 desire is in life in here's my thing for this channel i want to go to the east coast and do live shows spend a week and just do live shows with all of you all y'all and then beyond that to go to england dean mikitich and uh the lovely emma bannon I mean, I'm waiting. I can't wait. I can't wait. I've told Emma, I'm like, come on, come on the show. What's up? I want to stream with Emma Bannon and, 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 uh, the lovely Emma Bannon. If only just, uh, you know what? I just want to hear her tell one of her jokes live. I know that's weird. I just want her to give one of her weird dad jokes and I only say dad jokes. I don't mean to be patriarchal. I'm just saying they're kind of dad jokes. And I just want to hear one. Call them I, Emma jokes. Yeah, I I want I want to hear an Emma joke live. I want her to lay it on me live. Give it to me. Give it to me live. Just tell me the same. I don't want to just read it. I want you to sell it, Emma Bannon. 
God damn it. You sell me one of your goddamn horrible jokes and I'll love you forever. We all, by the way, Tom, don't you love Emma Bannon's jokes? I do. I really I, do. I, I do too. Yeah, like that bit. Just like how you say it, I, I could send you something, you could be having the worst day, and it might bring you up a bit. Emma Bannon can tell one of those jokes. And out of the blue, it'll just make you laugh for no reason. Mikey? Because it's just that way. What do you think? Yes, I Emma love Bannon's it. jokes. And I and I and I love comedy. I always start off the new year with uh, two movies. Uh, the first is When Harry Met Sally, <gasps> followed qu- followed quickly by uh, What's Up, Doc. Because I came here Doc. tonight. Because when you want your uh, the you want your life to start right now, whatever. Is there something wrong with my face? <laughs> no. Dude, When Harry Met Sally is one of the great movies of all time. It and is not... New Year's, it, and it's a New Year's movie. It's the greatest New Year's movie ever. And it has Gary Fisher. Uh, yes. Oh, married. Gary Fisher and Bruce Kirby, which they were fantastic supporting. Oh, my God. Yeah. Your stupid wagon wheel coffee table. I thought you liked it. I was being nice. Come on, man. And then, and, and then What's Up, Doc is just total slapstick, stupid, silly movie that if you don't laugh at that movie, and it's a great way to start off the new year with a smile on your face. I, 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 I met Bruno Kirby. Um, I, I spoke with him. He was actually in Paul Verhoeven's first English language film, Flesh and Blood. Yeah. When I met him, it was in the 1985 uh, Seattle International Film Festival, and he was dating Jennifer Jason Lee. And I was, um, we, we we were pass holders, so we had like the VIP seats or whatever. And I was sitting right behind him and Jennifer Jason Lee, and I I I talked to him, and he was. I was 17, 18. I just turned, I, I think I just turned 18 in 85. I was a kid. I talked to him. I'm like, dude, you're young Clemenza. And, and he, uh, he, he was, he laughed. He was so nice to me. And, uh, uh, he uh, he had a, a a little part in Flesh and Blood. He was not the star like Jennifer Jason Lee and Rutger Howe was Paul Verhoeven's first English language movie. And uh, afterwards, there was an after party, and and uh, he he was so nice to me. He thought it was so hilarious. Now, when Harry Met Sally had not been made yet, so he. For me, he was young Clemenza in Godfather 2, and he had not made um, When Harry Met Sally, because that was later. And uh, he died soon after he made the film. And of all the stars I've ever met, he was one of the warmest, nicest, funniest. He couldn't believe that, like, if you could quote a line he said in a movie, he couldn't believe it. He was like, what? How do you know that? <laughs> he was great, man. I miss that guy. I mean, I mean the best line, best line in uh, when Harry met Sally. You made her meow, <laughs> <laughs> dude. It was so that's so good, so good. I mean, that, first of all, I that movie is so great. It's so great. Yes. And uh, and and people are like, well, it's just a Woody Allen knockoff. I don't think so. I it's I don't I never thought of it that way. But my God, it's so good. You made it's a woman, great Nora yeah. Ephron movie. Great yeah, Rob Reiner movie. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all it's all good. I mean, it's uh, oh, it's so good. It's so, you know. And and by the way, it, it it's not just a great New Year's Eve movie. It's also a great Christmas movie too. 
You know, it it, it it's it it, it it might encompass the great. It, it might be the great holiday season movie of all time. It's it's really good. And and people, yeah, God, of, man, of, of, of that movie, eight, 1987. still holds up. Man, it Thank totally God. does. I mean, you know, and you look at you look at uh, Carrie Fisher, <laughs> and and Bruno Kirby. They're both gone. Um, yeah. you know, Jimmy Breslin, Bruno Kirby, one of his best things, one of the best roles besides that was him in uh, City Slickers. Mm. Would you stop with the VCR door? No, it was, it was so good. He's not gonna get it. He was just a really nice dude. He was a, a you know, uh, one of one of the first. It's very funny because he was one of the first Hollywood actors I met. And I had not seen Godfather 2 when I met him. <laughs> He's very good in that. I know, terrible. Gents, I'm going to say goodnight. I, I forget. We're still streaming live on YouTube. Yeah. And, I want to uh, thank you both for being great imagination connoisseurs. Uh, Don't forget to release the PGS All-Stars, Rob. I, uh, yes, I will put them all out. I know I I am terrible. The, those and the film festival awards going to happen this month. I promise. Because you know I, we did announce the twenty. We got to end the, the film festival. Finalists. Yeah, and, and you know what? There we we got fifty. What is fifty seven entries? I think we got fifty seven entries. Pretty amazing. And, and, and some of those movies. Channel. Some of those films have gone on to win awards at other real, real film festivals, which I love. I love that. I love that um, some of our semifinalists have won awards, which is great. It's fantastic. But, gentlemen, Mikey, Tom, um... It's four o'clock in the morning. It's four o'clock. And happy New Year, everybody! Happy New yeah. Year to all of you. I want to thank the moderators, uh, Darren Seely. Darren, are you like? Why are you here? But thank God you are here. Uh, thank well, you, you were Darren. screaming long enough that Darren showed up. Yeah, I want to thank all my moderators, uh, Louise X Sparrow. Uh, you know, anyone. Thank you to everyone. I want to thank all of the members of the Post Geek Singularity community. Um, I want to thank Elizabeth and mm, my God, Elizabeth has never come on the show, but by the way, I promise you whining about movies is coming back because people, my God, people so want it. And it's crazy that theoretically this is the 130th episode. We forget that we did that and Elizabeth loves doing it, um, you know, between her being employed by. Uh, Arts Center and me mm, dealing with John Campion. Not dealing with. I'm really excited. I am going back on the John Campion show. Um, for those people who don't know, I'm going back. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a problematic for me from a certain extent. It will not change the fact that Rob's observations will be happening. And um, the... the uh, uh, it's it'll be fine. It'll be fine, and so I'm I'm don't excited about. Don't burn yourself about, out, Rob. What's that? I said, don't burn yourself out, buddy. No, 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 I won't. It'll be fine. It's good. Um, but John made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So it, it's all uh, January eighteenth, Dota, season two, Netflix. Yes. By the way, it's true. So. Is that did they finally? Because it was it was the sixth. Yeah. Now it's the officially the eighteenth. I was looking through the uh, coming soon's on there, and it, it is the eighteenth. Okay. So what what Tom is saying is that yes, um, my next thing. Uh, by the way, you'll never have to watch the Tango Shalom VOD <laughs> promo anymore. It's done. We're, it's over. It's done. It's finished. But the next thing that I can't put on, the next project that I worked on was Dota Dragon's Blood Season 2, which 
I thought it was the 6th. Now it's the 18th. Uh, it's the animated series, the next eight episodes. And by the way, perhaps we might get a third season. And maybe the third season could already be finished. Wait, I didn't say that. But uh, anyway, Netflix, the 18th of January. That's my latest work, the editorial of that show. By the way, season two of Dota Dragon's Blood is fucking bonkers. It's really good. Wait, not that uh, not that I would know. No, I do know. But it's it's bonkers. It's really good. And if you like it, I know. I was like, well, Rob, it's uh, it's not like Arcane, bro. Like, okay, you know what? It, it's anime. It, yeah, it's not like Arcane. I love Arcane, but why is everybody like? like like gonna compare and contrast arcane's great it's great it's fantastic i get it but Dota. and on that note on that note gentlemen when you meet has a story to tell okay so well, you, well, well well hang on tom you please you say it okay uh on that note Everyone you meet has a story to tell that you have yet to hear. And all you have to do is listen. I want to thank you, and I want to thank Rob, and Happy New Year to you all for watching. I'm all choked up. Mikey, Tom, you guys are the best. I want to thank you. I don't know why on the East Coast you're still up at 7, 12 in the morning. I don't know about Tom. I had a nap. Well, I had a nap tonight too. Well, I I just want to say that you guys are are the 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 cornerstones of this community. Thank you all. We're gonna have a great 2022, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll make some cool shit, and uh, that'll be more inclusive. I don't mean inclusive like I'm talking inclusive to this channel to you people. What do you mean, you people? I don't want to get. I don't want to go down. I don't want to get in the rabbit hole. I'm not going to go down that. I'm not going to do it. I'm just saying that you, you on your own, you imagination connoisseurs, stuff's things are dice. Dice are rolling according to uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, and and many many more Star Trek rants to come. Oh my God! First of all, you know. I no, 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 don't okay. you get started. I, 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 that, that, I don't, don't. Mikey, this was your, this was your doing. You almost did Yeah, it. but just, just sign off. We can talk about it another time. We got 364 more days. To all go. right. All right. It's true. Now, everyone, I want you to remember this was Elizaview's whining about movies episode 130. And uh, brought to you by Elizabeth, the arbiter of cinematic excellence and the enchantress of entertainment. Certainly not me. She lit out here t- years or uh, year, uh, whatever, a long time ago. But it's great to be back. Thank you to the fans. And thank you to Mikey and Tom. And we, my friends, we're out. We're out. We're, 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 we're gone. I mean, we are leaving Happy 2022, my God. Can you believe it? I can't.